Assalamu alaikum, guys. Welcome to episode 11. Assalamu alaikum. Episode 11 of Freshly Grounded, man. This 11, is you're going to say 11 in uh, another language? Um, I, I, I can only do it up to 10, I'm afraid. I can say it in Pujabi, but that's a bit. What did you say in 10 again? In I end? said I didn't actually manage to get to 10 either. So you got what I'm going to do for next week's episode, why next week's episode? I'm going to learn 12. Each one you could do in a different language for each one. Okay. You can do Begoli, man. What, how does it say Egaro. I feel like I'm. I feel like Egaro. I feel like I'm gonna trust you. Egaro, right? eleven. Egaro. It sounds a bit like egg roll. Um, so welcome to episode egg roll. Um, <laughs> um, wow, this episode was. Um, wait, let's do the sponsors first. How about that, Sam? <laughs> yeah. So, what's our first sponsor? Fifty nine. Yeah. Fifty underscore nine on yeah. Instagram. Uh, Fifty nine coffee and juice bar. Coffee, juice, snacks, fresh snacks. Everything's fresh. Um, a 59 Stanhope Road. Did I say it right? You yeah, know, Stanhope Road. Road yeah, brand Stanhope new menu Road. coming soon. Summer menu coming soon. We talk about it a bit, actually. We do discuss episode, it yeah. briefly. Come down and see for yourself. Remember, um, last chance to get your um, extra scoop, of, scoop ice of ice cream this month. It does end um, end of this month. So uh, make sure you get down there for that. Um, next sponsor is Azaha. IZAHA.com. We just lo- we restocked on the bl- on the green camo hat. Yeah. And we just launched a brand new suede cap. Yeah. Um. So use mm. code freshly grounded. Incredible. The detailing on this hat is incredible. Do you like it? Yeah. In, I mean, how you've gone inside and you just handpicked this material. Yeah. Yeah. It was really really impressive. Mashallah. We take a little care. Yeah, man. Into. And the next sponsor. Uh, for, for quote freshly grounded is the okay. so use freshly grounded in the in checkout and you get fifteen percent off. And then lastly, brought to you guys by Flavor, your complete branding marketing solution. Uh, F L A V R. If you go on Instagram, it's um, the handle is by Flavor B Y F L A V R. Um, yeah, my marketing. Uh, branding, app design, app development, a whole bunch of stuff, pretty much everything you need for your company, to be honest, a one-stop shop. Um, yeah, this episode, we have Abu Bakr Islam in. Abu Bakr from Roadside to Islam. Yeah. And Spot. Very, uh, like we predicted last week, very deep conversations. Yeah, yeah. A lot of a lot of listening that was done today by me yeah. and Sam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't see, I don't think I spoke three or four times. We practiced, I think practicing listening is good. Yeah, it's good. It? You know, what? like I said, Abu Bakr always got some beneficial, good, yeah. powerful stuff to say. Um, and he does, he did it today, so mashallah, alhamdulillah. Yeah, we spoke about, um, so at the beginning of the episode, we kind of spoke about, um, we spoke about pre-workouts, didn't we? Um, <laughs> you did, yeah. yeah. We spoke <laughs> about uh, cabs, Ubers, <laughs> yep. conversations. Yep. Uh, and then Abu Bakr came in and we discussed, man, we discussed everything from, we had a long chat about like vlogging or vloggers and, and kind of his take on, 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 on that lifestyle. And we had a bit of like a friendly debate about it. Spoke about, um, towards the end, spoke about like the concept of death and why Abu Bakr like, likes to remind himself about death a lot. Um, his lifestyle kind of pre-Islam. Uh, what else did we discuss? That's about it. Yeah, we, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Re- really? Yeah, it was a lot of, it was, we, went into, we went into kind of those topics quite a lot and it was nice and deep, but unfortunately kind of we had to, I wish we could have spoken for so much longer. Um, it gets juicy at the end as well, doesn't it? It does, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Real juicy, like a freshly squeezed 59 juice. Yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, we got a lot of interesting and uh, fun stuff coming up very soon. We've got some good Ramadan plans that we haven't discussed, but maybe we can discuss them next week. That's, that's next it. week, maybe we'll announce it. Yeah, make Hopefully. it official. Yeah. Um, but, but if you would like to, I'll say this. If you would like to see us um, uh, in your city or record an episode in your city... Uh, drop us an email hello at freshlygrounded.com also for any sponsorship inquiries hello at freshlygrounded.com anything to do with Freshly Grounded hit up hello at freshlygrounded.com and let's get into episode egg roll and welcome to Freshly Grounded the brand new podcast by best friends Faisal and Sam huh? I welcome I said welcome to Freshly Grounded no, after that bit the brand new podcast. And after that bit? My best friends, Facebook and Sam. Really? Thursday, 27th of April, 2017. That's just the, that's the date. Is it? Yeah, it's the date. So this is a whole new feeling you've got for the intro. Yeah, no, I just said, I just, I just thought I'd just mention the date. Yeah. Less what, than 30 days. Next? Less than 30 days to Ramadan. Le- less than 30? Less than 30. That's I, think, quick. I think like as of yesterday or something. Uh, Jazakallah khair, bro. You just shaped me up. Uh, you just shaped me. You shaped me beard up. Alhamdulillah. Uh, Feel good? Quickly. Yeah, Alhamdulillah. May Allah award you. I, I mean, know I, uh, today's been a hectic morning, to say the least. For you, yeah. 
slightly only because um so coming down one of the roads uh, one of the late the, on the main road that i can't come down on normally and on thursdays i make an extra effort to make sure i'm on time because mm. i know people are relying on me um and uh the lane was closed one of the lanes for part of the way which slowed me down a bit yep and then um our guest that's coming in very shortly abu Bakr, rang me and he said that he so he's he's staying for a, a decent amount of time inshallah but he's got to be out here by 12. um you have a couple appointments as well yeah so uh inshallah it'll be a nice uh a nice relaxed episode yeah but just with knowing that you know it's a very busy day for everybody also yeah 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 <laughs> a yeah. post thing yeah. but how's your week been man alhamdulillah week's been good i was just gonna say mahi's gonna probably show up here mid mid podcast as well Sick. so he'll come in he's not been here has he no he's not been here it'll be interesting it'll be lovely yeah. to see him yeah Maybe even get him on camera for two minutes. Yeah. If it, see how it works out. I mean, we could. I suppose we'd have to mic him up and stuff. No, not really. If you just l- put him in the... I would literally like, oh, guys, if you're watching on YouTube, here's Mark. Yeah, yeah. Be. And what about if they didn't just listen to it on the episode? On the they would never see him. Oh. Like Red, you never see Red. That's true. Where is Red? Red's... Uh, Red's always, we got Nate on productions right now. <laughs> and uh, Red is going to be coming in uh, shortly. Th- that was also another thing, unfortunately... Um, you know, Qadr of Allah, so not that unfortunate, but and, and uh, Red's just running a bit behind as well. Right. And uh, that's it now. So that's good. We're good. Excellent. We're ready to start. So how you be- week's been good so week's far? Week's been, s- alhamdulillah, very productive. Yeah. Uh, last week, w- uh, the last week or so, um, I've had a bit of a, hmm, it's been a bit stagnant. Okay. So this week there's been a lot happening, which I'm very happy with. Feels good to be yeah, busy. Yeah, oh, very. Well, I've, I was always busy, I suppose, but right. I just. Um, when you say stagnant, how you? What do you mean? So we were uh, awaiting on new stock. Right. Uh, there was an, uh, that event that I was talking about last week. We, we, we it was at very early stages of planning, but right. things weren't moving forward. Right. So stuff like this week, Alhamdulillah, the venue was confirmed Mashallah. for that. Our stock came in yesterday. We did a launch, and so it's nice to just because that stuff gets us busy again. Yeah. And 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 the team was working on the shoot yesterday for the for the new products. Um, we had Kareem working on the event with me and stuff, and I had a lot of meetings yesterday with like. Um, like uh, people for the, I had phone meetings with the for the event. I had meetings with Kareem to sort out like so logistics. How's the how's the event coming along? Getting oh, organised. I made yeah. So we, inshallah, we're com- gonna announce it next week. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna announce it next week. Inshallah, cool. so I'm really excited to announce inshallah. it. Inshallah, wicked. Yeah, man. What about yourself? That's good. Um, week? Yeah, I've jo- I've been busy this week. Alhamdulillah, it's been nice. I've um, Josh got me some um, new clippers. Um, he gave me two new sets of clippers for my tools, for my uh, for my equipment. Definitely kind of him. Very kind of him, man. And um, it's given me a whole new lease of life in terms of um, with cutting hair. It's been oh. it's it's been nice. I've been I've had a really busy week cutting hair, getting creative. Oh, you've been cutting more this week. Cutting hair a bit more this week, yeah. Oh really? Um, you normally nice. twice, two days a week. A couple right? of days a week, yeah. So I've just I've been I've made myself a little bit busier, but I've a bit enjoyed it, man. We enjoyed cutting hair this week, so I've been busy cutting hair, uh, and. Um, um, one of the one of the staff of uh, Fifty Nine has gone away for a week, so I've been in there a bit more, um, getting a little bit more organised, um, trying to like change up the menu a little bit, make it like I say, not that that was stagnant, but it was kind of kind of two options, kind of leave it how it's been, which is is good, or add some things to it, and mix up a little bit. So I'm just in the process of sort of mixing all the menus up. I might even completely redo all the menus. Just, really? Just just why your not? Menus are, your menu is yeah, really. I love your menu. Yeah, I know, but why not? Why not? Make, yeah, why not suppose. increase it? Why not make it better? Because True. you know what I mean. I never really, I never with the menus. Obviously, we've got printed menus. We've got one on the on the window and on the mirror and stuff. But it's stuff that I can get new menus done. I can get new stuff put on the uh, on the mirror. It's also now I've learned. We've been open a couple of months. I've learned what's popular, um, and then the things that are popular I want to build on. So we've got these new things on the menu, froyos, which have been really really popular. So it's like frozen yogurt smoothies. Okay. Um, which to be fair, out of the whole menu. They're not the healthiest thing on the menu. They're, there's more sort of artificial sugar in there than there would be, like, a, say, a smoothie or a juice when it's just kind of all, all of it's, like, natural ju- natural sugars. Um, but they're very popular, so we're kind of getting a, a, a larger extended menu of froyos done, changing up all the juices, going to have um, some extra, extra healthy juices. So people who who are serious on their on their juicing and their and their detoxing and their weight loss and stuff you can have a select juices which hasn't really got much, even much natural sugar so a lot of um beetroot and ginger and things like that um so we're going to have a bit more of a menu f- catered for people who are you know really on it who don't want any kind of sugar in their in their in their juice um and then we're going to um just just the smoothies that have been popular just create a few more like that 
Um, so yeah, just keep it moving basically. So it's a nice feeling. It's a nice feeling that um, I've got the control to, I can think of something, an idea, put it on a piece of paper and suddenly that's it comes to life. That's um, the most beautiful thing, isn't it? That's, that is the be- really yeah. beautiful thing. It's quite a powerful thing. And, and obviously if you make the right decisions and you, you come up with the right things, which are very popular, that's obviously how you make a business successful so it's about finding out what works what works in your local area what kind of community you're getting into the business etc etc so it's nice it's been it's just like learning every day with with 59 um mm. it's, it's beautiful and, it, and i don't it doesn't doesn't stress me out because alhamdulillah and like what we've got going now is 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 great people love it we've got great coffees great drinks everything it's bit constantly busy i show up there and it's busy it's like wow it's, in, it's incredible but it's always like i definitely want to keep it keep it moving keep it like people sort of questioning like have the new things on the menu new specials and stuff so we also we've got summer coming up so we're gonna look inshallah do like a barbecue outside oh that'd be lovely you've like got the right place, space for it as well exactly got that space outside so this is what i'm saying just try and try and add things to it and like i said make ideas come to life yeah i, I know there's like this like um so uh, like a like a mantra that a lot of people live by and i definitely use this for um a lot of like things that I do and it's the idea of like if it's not broke don't fix it yeah. but I think that kind of works for most things other than business because you're right you can't if the, if it, yes alhamdulillah everything's going well and people are liking the menu but I suppose you're right in business you, in order to kind of expand you have to change of course I mean, look, for example right? look at well, look at look at apple yeah and look how there's a new iphone all the, constantly and yeah. like you could pick up the latest iphone and be like you can't really get much better than this but in terms of technology but they yeah. do they constantly re- like they're constantly releasing brand new products mm. people would argue saying whether they need to or not but yeah they do they keep it moving that's the thing constantly new bad, ideas right? yeah. but keeping it moving that's and that, that's one of the biggest you know busy, biggest busiest biggest companies in the world so that's an example isn't it I was, there's something that I saw about Apple. Um, the yeah, other you, day. you like Apple, don't you? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I was uh, <laughs> kind of, I suppose. Yeah. Um, what was I seeing you about Apple? A, you did a stint with them. <laughs> oh, of course. Yeah, I did do a stint with them. I did. Right. I I did. A, I did less than a year with them. Alhamdulillah. But I learned quite a lot in that time. Mm. Did you know that the glass that's used for Apple stores, like their doors and windows and stuff, is a special glass that's made by a German company, and they liked it so much that they what they did is they acquired the company. So now Apple own that company, and so they uh, so like their glass is now made in house for their sports stores specifically. Really? Yeah. And I, I I might be wrong, so I don't want to don't quote me on this, but I believe that one of the reasons they acquired it is so that like like no one else can kind of use it. So th- is their product now? So, so this German company makes a specific type of glass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if me and you saw it, you wouldn't think any difference. But yeah. if, you th- if you really do think about it, you look at Apple Store, yeah, the yeah, glass does true. look a it's bit true, special, it's true, it? It's true. Yeah. It's true. So yeah, that's one of the things I learned there. Wow. I also learned that Steve Jobs was a perfectionist. When he came into our store um, before he died, this was like many years ago. I wasn't there at the time. Um, he was like one in his hat. It was at Regent, so it was Regent Street. It was one I used to work at, and he they, they were like known in the old. So now they've like revamped it, but in the old old store they were known for um, they were known for this staircase that they had. Like as soon as you go in, this massive like staircase. It was like what Regent Street was known for, and he. As he came in to like for the like sometime before the opening, he just kind of went upstairs and he was just like walking upstairs and holding the radio and he just like slid his hand across the radio and something just didn't quite feel right with like the wood or something. And he, I, I believe what happened is he, he, he ended up getting the whole thing changed. Really? Perfectionist to the T. Really? Because um, it didn't feel right in his hand? It didn't feel right. Apparently, I ca- that, that, uh, that, that story is true, but um, the specifics of it, it should be researched because I can't remember but uh, yeah, yeah. stuff did like they, that man did they like, change the whole staircase or? I believe so I believe so but I might be wrong they definitely made changes well I'm it's a good example it. isn't it look how successful the company is I no, suppose exactly. so I suppose you focus on the minor details and then um, they do say that though it's like, it's like the concept of the pennies make the pound like uh, you save your pennies and it ends up to a, a quite a lot of money just like if you focus on the little things in life it kind of makes a big impact very um, true yeah, man. On a, uh, what? Uh, speaking of which, what are you like? What's your opinion on like? Um, not not too personal on your on your personal life, but what's your opinion on the idea of like saving? Because I've been brought up in this mentality with like my dad being a businessman, like, and he's like a typical. So when he was in Pakistan when he was younger, they they had their own farm, and he'd wake up early hours of the morning, like uh, probably before Fajr time, go to the farm, pick. It was a vegetable farm, so they'd go pick the veg. He'd drop it back to his mom. She'd make the food while they're at school. They need to go to school. And then we back from school, he'd like get some more of their veg and like sell it to the market. And then he'd come. So he's always had this mentality of like grafting and stuff. And he's kind of brought me up in the mentality that like uh, a, a very unpopular opinion that saving kind of 
is never a good idea because if there's money there, that means that money could be making more money. But right yeah. now, he's sitting there not doing anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's your opinion on that? Because I think there, I think there's a balance. I think he, what he's saying is right. If there's money sitting there, that that could be making that money could be used to make more money. But I suppose it's always good to have like a con- contingency plan, isn't I it? I definitely I agree. There needs to be a balance with, and I I agree with both of those statements to be honest. And I and I. For me personally, I think definitely sh- there should be some money to fall back on because you never know what life's gonna hand you. Um, but definitely, like reinvesting into new into new ideas and new businesses for me, if you ask me my personal opinion, that's what I think is that's that's what is better. So rather than just having a huge bundle of cash sitting in the bank, almost doing nothing, obviously not, I'm not going to ca- collect interest on that. Mm. Whether you can re and put that into something, whether you, again you're not going to necessarily see it straight away, mm. but that long it's long term investment within something else. That's for me, I think is is more interesting way to spend your money, isn't it? Yeah, I think there's a lot of like really cool like small tips and tricks when it comes to business and money and money handling. I've definitely not mastered like the idea of like organ- being organized with my like, uh, I'm not saying I'm an erratic spender, but I'm also not like, you won't find me being the most organized person. Yeah. But there's little things I've heard that are like, I suppose keys to success from very successful people in terms of dunya and one of them I think it might be Warren Buffett well, I might be wrong there's a lot of quotes that be put online and they like assign it to people yeah, that yeah. might not be true but anyway one of them is like the concept of if you can't afford something three times over don't even don't buy one of mm-hmm. it do you know yeah, what I mean yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I believe it was Warren Buffett but like I said it might be said someone else I think um Going back on that, you I mean you have to 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 earn money, you have to spend money. To spend money, you have to make money. Mm. To spend money, you have to spend money to make money. Sorry, right, let, me refer- right. let me rephrase that. You have to spend money to make money. And that's a reality. So you can't really create anything business wise. Well, you can, there's a small amount of things you can, but without actually putting a little bit of um, an investment into it, whether even whether it's a website or if it's actually a physical product or whatever it is, there's always generally like you have to put money into something. So I think that's a that's a, a, a better way to to handle your wealth is to um, explore new avenues and try and create new things. I was about to say something, I totally forgot what it was. Um, uh, what were you saying about the quote? Uh, about, um, I was oh, talking about how it's li- living, in, living in your means. This is an interesting conversation I had with my father actually when I was away, <laughs> away with him about, you know, what you were saying about don't buy something if you can afford it three times over. We see today, like, majority of people driving around and that. Um, my dad was surprised because everyone, everyone's got such amazing cars these days. Young people have got, like, amazing cars. You know, even all the guys who work for me have got ama- amazing cars, mashallah, like really mm. beautiful, you know, Mercedes, BMWs everywhere, really nice flash cars. And, my, and, and, it, and I said to my dad, well, you know, it's not necessarily everyone has just gone out and, and brought, because people also, you can you can get, you know, finance on watches, finances, finance on laptops, on cameras, on cars, on everything. So really, you can go out and you can, and you can floss and you can have an amazing car, an amazing watch, amazing laptop and all this, you know, everything. But really, wholeheartedly, you don't own, you don't, uh, you don't, uh, you know, you don't own it. You haven't earned it. It's, you've got it on the finance. And that's the way of the world now. Like generally, you don't even see old cars on the, on the, on the road. You see a lot of nice new cars and young people are all in very flash cars. And it's, it's, it's not, they're not, people aren't living within their means. Obviously, it's, it's fine to go and do that for, for them. But, you know, it's, they haven't actually, they're not, it's not theirs. Do you know what I mean? It's like a false reality. Everyone's that, living in a false reality, yeah. That's quite, um, that that relates to the first ever podcast I ever did, which was uh, the next phase episode I did with my brother, Omar. Yeah. And we kind of like delved into like his life and like the mistakes he'd made and all this kind of stuff. And in that episode, he was talking about how at like 20 or 21, he owned a Porsche, but couldn't afford petrol to put in the Porsche. Yeah. Which is like yeah. so crazy because it's like... Um, it's exactly what you talk about. Like, if anyone was to look at it, they'd be like, and people were, they're making the, the craziest comments, brand new, like, straight out of the showroom Porsche. Yeah. The guy can't afford to put pressure really? in the Porsche. You know what I mean, like, but it was a perception and it was like, the, yeah, when you're like clouded by these things and, and it's insane, man. Like, yeah, it, it, money management is such a big thing. And I think only in recent times when, uh, I'm more responsive, I was speaking to someone about this actually, like, um, about saying about how, because they were speaking, they were being very generous talking to me about how my business has expanded and stuff. And I was saying to them, it's crazy because as a, when your business expands, your uh, expenses also expand. And um, so it's a case of, I suppose, like, so recently I've had more of, I'd say I've had more responsibility in recent times than I've had maybe uh, like in years before, definitely. Mm. Especially because I'm still 23. So like, you got to bear in mind that 
I my responsibility my responsibility is like a year ago were nothing compared to like a 30 40 year old man's responsibility and so I feel like in the last like year my responsibilities have grown like so much higher um Although my dad would disagree and tell me I don't have any responsibilities. Mm. But um, yeah, so my responsibilities go and and only so only in those times I've realized now, I'm and I'm beginning to realise more and more every day how important the management of money, but also like just all just organization in general is so important. And simply not being an organized person is not a good enough excuse. Yeah. And that all has been my excuse. And it's a case of, all right, cool, if you're not an organized person you better learn to become organized. Have you been quite disorganized throughout your life, would you say? Yes. How, how disorganized would you say? I think my mind is erratic and therefore yeah. like, because the, the way I think is erratic, the way I behave might be as well. Yeah. Um, uh, and, and I've always said, oh look, it's, it's my nature. I'm, it's naturally what I'm yeah. like, which is fine to admit that, but it's also not okay to be like, all right, cool, I'm going to live with that. Like, yeah. If you find a weakness in yourself, make some changes. For right. sure, it's very easy to ha use that cop out. It's in my nature, but really, like we all have flaws in our nature or in our character that we have to adjust. And uh, for me, organization is massive. Again, it surprises me that you say that. I thought you were a bit more organized. I thought you were organized. To be fair, oh mess. I'm the most. I'm this very. I'm very disorganized. Yeah. Oh, it makes you. So I mean, yeah. <laughs> but alhamdulillah, both, both like get stressed. Both yeah. get both disorganized. Maybe that's connected. Perhaps. It, it, well, it must be because like uh, uh, here's here's another thing. I was um. Uh, I, I, this, this is something that I've not known, but apparently my wife's been telling me that I like in my sleep sometimes I like uh, would like uh, not, not like tw like twitch, yeah. but have like quite like a strong yeah. twitch. And I'll say this, it's weird because like I do my other card before I sleep and my eyes are closed and stuff. And so I don't I don't I don't necessarily have bad dreams and stuff. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. So um, I was saying to that it could be linked to the fact that because potentially like I live in this mindset of like like a stressful mindset, which remember when we spoke about a couple of weeks ago that like we found a study that literally says if you if you have a stressy mind, it's going to physically end up making you ill. So it's definitely something I've been trying to work on. Um, but I was saying be perhaps because of that, like when I'm sleeping, I feel like I can never be relaxed 100%. And so perhaps when I'm sleeping, I'm still not 100% relaxed. And so I'm like on edge. Do you know what I mean? I think I've had that as well, to be fair. Does that make sense what I'm saying? I know exactly like what you rubbish? mean. I, I, but I still think you're resting, and I still think you are you are sleeping. I wouldn't say that like you you're necessarily you're asleep, but still like stressed and on edge. I reckon when you're asleep, you are just you are asleep. Maybe yeah. that's just, maybe that's more physical. Maybe that's a physical thing rather than a mental thing. Perhaps. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You say, do you know what I mean by that? Maybe, yeah. maybe it is more. I of just a, mean because it does sound if slightly. It was mental. That means you wouldn't aren't sleeping. You're just sitting there, just <laughs> for, for yeah. several straight. Yeah, because I don't have. A, I don't have a problem falling asleep. Alhamdulillah, you're asleep. Your soul's out of your body, and you're gone, and you're resting. Maybe it's a, maybe it's like a it's a it's a physical body thing. Oh, I say I don't have a problem falling asleep, but do you know what happened the other day? What's that, bro? Okay, so I go to the gym, right? And so you know Ajmal, he's two-time world champion bodybuilder, natural bodybuilder. So. Recently, on, uh, in Alhamdulillah, in uh, in September this past year, he won uh, again. So for the second time, he won the championships, and he was, uh, as well as many other things, he was gifted um, so many supplements, like so many supplements, right? And it's enough that you could sell them and make a look a good load of money. But he's not, he he doesn't have the intention to do that. So he just has them stacked up. So what we've been, so when I started training with him, we've never we've never had like pre workouts and stuff because he's never been on that and he. Like, it's known that you get dependent on that kind of stuff. So, but anyway, since he won the competition, because he's had so many, we've just been going through them. And so we've gone through two, I think like two boxes now. Yeah. And we start, there's like, a, and they're all different brands. And there's a third one, I can't remember the name of it, that we were going to start the other day. And so he opened it up and we were like, oh, blah, blah. Like, it was all in my vlog and stuff. And we were talking about how we're going to start this pre-workout. So he gave, so he, he, I had some and he had some. And we both never tried it before. And it was very strong. And then um, we started the workout, really. So we had the pre-workout, we started the workout and our energy levels were like, like good and stuff. And then halfway through the workout, it was Maghrib time and we had a masjid just opposite our, the gym. So we thought, look, let's go to the masjid. We shouldn't miss Jum'a. So we went to the masjid. And so we went from like being really energetic and working out to going really slow. Yeah. And in, in the mosque, I bro, I went to the mosque to um, make wudu and as I sat down, I got this harsh pain in my like kidney or my side. I couldn't sit down. I couldn't get up. I couldn't do anything. I was like, to the, the pain where I was like making noise. I was, like, oh, like, and then I managed to make wudu. I managed to like limp over to the salah. I missed one rakat because I was so being really? so slow. Yeah, and we got there early. Your kidney? 
Bro, it's weird. And then I, I don't know if it's linked, by the way. I don't. Uh, but so, sounds like it could be linked. Yeah. And then so so I make my salah, and then my salah feeling like lightheaded, and like I'm gonna faint. And my kid is killing, and I'm like, when I'm going to subdue them, like dropping like slowly. Sedu- Managed to do the salah, and after Ajma comes up to me and goes, Bro, how did you feel in that salah? I said, I felt really weird. He goes, Bro, I felt like I was gonna faint. And really? I said, Bro, so did I. What was his kidney saying? His kidney was fine. Yeah. Yeah. I think just the motion of me sitting down, like, so dramatic. Like, well, we, you got to bear in mind, our hearts were racing, and we just went slowly right down into uh, salah. Yeah. Anyway, um, went back to the workout, kind of working out, was feeling proper pumped and like, energetic and like adrenaline. And, um, he was, the whole time in the gym, he was saying to me, bro, I feel a bit weird, this kind of stuff. And there's another brother, Nas, he had a pre-workout and he was feeling fine And then until the end of the workout. By the end of the workout, he was feeling weird as well. The same one that you had. Yeah, yeah, he had that as well. And um, so what happened is we ended up, so we, we went home and by the time I got home... Sorry, we had a bit of an audio issue. So if you guys are listening to this podcast, well, I mean, you have to have been listening to it, but <laughs> you might have heard like a bit of an issue with the audio, but we're back. Um, yeah, so I was talking about, uh, so I ended up going home and yep. um, and then with me, I sleep like a baby, bro. Alhamdulillah, I have such busy days. I wake up at Fajr, I tend not to uh, go back to sleep. and then I'm Even at, now, well, are, you, are you up from Fajr? I, I, yeah, right now I am because it's a yeah. bit of a weird time. Yeah, 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 so right now I'm still up. And then... Um, I go to work all day and then like sometimes to the gym and stuff. So by the time I got home, like one of my w- wife's like complaints is that like, oh, but once you hit the bed, you just knock out. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, so <laughs> for me, it's really out of character to be awake. And that night I didn't sleep. I was up to early hours in the morning, bro. And then I must slept. I, I don't know how long I slept, but I was up to early hours in the morning and then I woke up at Fajr and then I couldn't sleep after Fajr either. Really? So I had a really bad day that day because I had like hardly any sleep. And, um, and so anyway, so I messaged Ajma, I was like, bro, how was your sleep? He was like, alhamdulillah, I managed to sleep okay. I was like, bro, I didn't sleep a wink, man. Really? Um, I only slept a couple how hours. You, did you work the day after? Uh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. I, I was probably like, I wasn't cranky at work, but no, no I was fine at work. But then, but then we had a gym session that night, and then I went to the gym, and I, I did a really short, bad session. I ended up coming home because I just needed to sleep. So yeah, I really when, when, I, when I was younger, I had something similar happen to me, to be fair. I took a couple of uh, pre-workouts. Mm. Didn't sleep that night at all, and and I went to work. I, this is when I worked somewhere, and I had to go to work the next day, and zero Which sleep. And I was kind of like, it's like a, it's basically like too much caffeine. It feels like daydreaming, isn't it? It's horrible, bruv. Like the feeling, it's like it's the most horrible, rancid feeling. I had to go into work. I ended up going home early. Mad. But well, guess what happened? So, so the next day we went to the gym, and uh, we were speaking about it. And Ajma was like, no, nah, I'm not happy with that, and I was like, I'm not happy, blah blah. blah. And then we were like. So should we take some more free workout? And then <laughs> yeah. we were like, yeah, what? Right. So then anyway, we've got to go through. Anyway, so he was, so I said, bro, this time only give me half a spoon because it messed me up. Yeah. And so he was like, hold on, give me a sec. And he looked at the box just to see something. Bruv, the pre-workout expired si- six months ago. Really? That's what messed us up. It expired, oh, in, Octo- horrible thought, expired in October 2016. Bruv, some guy was saying to me, yeah, imagine having orange juice that was six months old and but, but and that would be bad for you. But this is pre-workout, which has all of these chemicals and stuff That's in what it. That's I'm saying. And Ajmal, I, at first me and Ajmal were laughing about, oh, like, and we were all like, oh, we we're really happy that at least like it was just, that's the reason, yeah. the reason. And we were laughing and joking. And halfway through our workout, Ajmal was like, bro, do you know what? That was extremely dangerous yeah, for us to do that because it's pre-workout. Chemist, yeah. <laughs> it could kill us even. It's and um so and that's why your chemical that's why your kidneys were giving right, right. Bro. perhaps uh, anyway and he was quite annoyed because perhaps he, he was, <laughs> do you, do you he, usually have kidney problems no, no, Stop no. why batting it away like it could yeah. be connected you like <laughs> <laughs> listen to this right Go on. listen to this He's annoyed because when you get a, a, a supplement like pre-workout off the shelf, it's meant to apparently last like two years uh, and not expire for like, at least like a year or two. Reason being because a big tub of pre-workout like that, you won't be able to yeah. finish in a month, even if you go to the gym every single day because you're only having one small spoon of it. So um, he was annoyed that when he won the competition, he got given that as one of the uh, as one of the gifts that he got given. Um, in like I think he got that in September and he ran out in October which means yeah. it, it only expired one month after yeah, but it yeah, should last yeah, years yeah, that's bad yeah so that's like bad on their behalf is he gonna um, chase it up probably not he's he got so many so I'm sure he'll just like to remember you you are sort of promoting um, pre-workout on this episode quite heavily aren't you am I would you say would you recommend it no I think you become dependent on it no bro should I tell you what a, a amazing natural pre-workout is Go on. Go to fifty nine. Yeah, and I think you're gonna. You think I'm gonna. You th- I know what you think I'm gonna say. You think I'm gonna say grab on the energy balls. Mm. I tell you what is a sick pre workout. The uh, rise and si- shine. Rise smoothie. and shine, bro. That smoothie. Is that the first that, time you had it. 
I've had it a few times now, oh, but yeah, from 59. But 59, yeah, that's the first time I had yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I'd, well, I, I was going to say I don't want to say what's in it, but it says it on your menu anyway. So, dates, mm. banana, mm. Um, and a bunch of other stuff. <laughs> yeah. Peanut butter. Peanut butter. I was like, bro, that is such a sick natural workout. Anyway, I had that before a workout uh, one day and um, and no and, and no no fake pre workouts. You felt good I had for an it. amazing workout. Yeah. Yeah. So, I would highly recommend anyone. Um, to always go for natural stuff over anything and if it was mm. nice like I'm putting dates in my body it's sooner I'm putting um, a banana in my body and all that kind of stuff and it's just goodness for me as well man mm. so do you know why you break fast with a date because of the sugar yeah yeah yeah. But yeah I thought you were going to elaborate so I thought you'd know a bit more oh no do you know more mm, not deep into it but obviously it makes sense obviously you know when you break fast I mean, I remember reading about it even last year about breaking the fast with a fizzy drink and how bad it is for your body. You can actually, that can actually kill you. You can actually shut your body down because obviously you've starved it all day and then to put that much badness into it can, like, you can have like a bad reaction to it. Heavily like, heavily like refute drinking fizzy drinks when you break fast. I heard w- that. Water I heard, and I heard, dates. I heard red meat as well when breaking fast, but I don't know. Make, it make, do you know what it, the sooner is to do water and dates, yeah? Okay. And it actually makes perfect sense because when you do, even if sometimes, you know, you're so hungry and you, and you like, like you were saying, you have all the samosas, everything out and you want to obviously just bang loads off because you haven't eaten all day. If it, when you actually calmly just have like dates and, and water, maybe a little bit of fruit and keep it really light before Tarawi, obviously in Ramadan, it's, you feel good for it. You can understand why it is the sunnah. It's just, it's light. It can, and does actually, the dates actually do um, sort your hunger out as well. Really? Yeah. If you have a few of them, it nices you up, feel good, feel light. Yeah, I suppose when you're just that hungry, you don't think like, oh yeah, I'll just have a date or three and then that's it. Like, uh, yeah, open your fast with a date, but then I'm thinking, I don't know. After that, you go do bank. You start, yeah, well, it, well yeah. you haven't eaten all day, so it's kind of like you feel like you deserve it. Yeah, yeah, it's true. That's what I'm saying. Maybe this year, maybe try a few different techniques. Techniques, yeah. I'm really excited for this year, man. I think I like am. there's just so much going on. Like uh, last year, unfortunately, I. Um, I didn't have bad Ramadan. You can't. I don't think I could say I had a bad Ramadan. But I, I, I really think that last year I um, was quite distracted, and um, I have to. I did a lot of like. I'm not exposing myself because it was out in public anyway. But I did a lot of like charity events and stuff in Ramadan mm-hmm. last year, and as much as that was nice because it was still like for the sake of Allah, inshallah. But it wasn't. I think I didn't take enough private time out in Ramadan last year, and then by the, by the time Ramadan finished, I was really sad. Yeah. Like. I was like, I don't think I got out of it what I've got in previous years. Yeah. So I'm I'm really excited to like redeem myself this this year. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. and and like remind and yeah. and this is also the first one I'm done that I'm living with my wife. Yeah. So that'd be a new experience. Will you me. do things together? Inshallah. I've Break never fast I've together never, and stuff. I hope so. I do hope so. Yeah. yeah I, I really look forward to that. You won't, you won't be going to the gym every night, will you? I haven't figured uh my th- the, the, obviously them boys because they. Be, 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 if you train, you train afterwards, though, wouldn't you? I was yes. just making the point yeah, that you'd yeah, probably yeah, have yeah. some free evenings, wouldn't you? To do yeah. nice things like with your missus and that. Yes, I, I suppose so. Inshallah. I haven't figured out well, how. If you're breaking fast 9 30, it shouldn't. Because there's a lot of events and stuff from Ramadan as well that I'm either going to be attending or working at and stuff. So I don't know how. I, it's going to be quite like sporad, sporadic. I Are you quite busy? I, yeah, my, my, my Ramadan's going to be very busy, inshallah. But I like that, man. Like, Ramadan is for uh, take your time out for yourself as well, uh, like like you know, and like it's, it's your time with Allah and mm. stuff like that. Um, but it's also nice that the all, it's a very busy month for Muslims, and in a sense, yeah. and, and everyone's more on it, which is so nice. You feel the community vibe more, do yeah. you? Yeah, of course. There's a lot. There's just a lot more going on, and people encourage each other as well. Like, you know, go, oh, let's go to the masjid together. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, um, I remember one brother when I first started practicing, I found it that kind of stuff hard, like taking time out to do private ibadah. And one brother made it really kind of f- fun, I'd say, for me. Like, he would say, so we'd go to the masjid and he'd be like, let's do some ibadah. And then, like, we'll meet up. Like, like we were in the same mosque, so like just in opposite ends. And he'd be like, all right, let's go away, do our own ibadah. And then we'll come back and have, an, like, if we do like an hour of reading, we'll come back and we'll have a 10 minute chat. And so, like, and then you look forward, nice, and yeah. then, so he, so he like eased me into it and stuff, and so it's nice, man. It's nice to encourage each other and stuff. And um, are you looking to do um, at the cuff at the end of the? Still undecided, man. I think um, I would like to yeah. because, like I say, yeah, last year was the first year that I didn't uh, prop- did since mm. since I started like properly, and um, and I think that was one of the reasons that I felt. Like I hadn't got out of it, everything that I could have. It's kind of just a, it's, it's 
man, I would recommend it highly to anybody, like, no matter what level of practicing you are, man, or what level, I, like I said, bro, the first time I did it, I, I, I didn't even know how to read Quran. It was my f I first started practicing. Like I didn't know anything. So my Shaitan was telling me like, "What are you gonna do for ten days? All day you're gonna be sitting there. It's gonna go so slow." Blah blah. But I promise you, when you're in its curve, your fasts are easier and they go by quicker than yeah. when you're out and about doing things. Yeah, it's mad. Ten days is a lot, a lot, a lot of time, though. It's it? not. Yeah, it is. But when you like, it doesn't feel it. Nah, it feels. It feels like you want to go back, man. You feel yeah. like it's just inexplainable. It's inexplainable, man. Yeah. Inshallah, man. If sorry, yeah. it, oh, is it inexplicable? It's inexplainable, no. Is that not a word? Inexplainable. Have you been to Saudi? I have, alhamdulillah. Yeah. But unfortunately, I was very uh, young. Not unfortunately, but I was young. Yeah, I was you fifteen. Didn't I didn't appreciate it as much. Or? Didn't appreciate it much as much. Apparently, it's completely changed since I've been anyway. It looks like it's very different, man. I see some videos of it. it looks constantly changing, isn't it? Getting bigger and bigger. Yeah. Inshallah, I'll make the intention. Inshallah. Be nice. Yeah, I'm looking to do that this year, inshallah. I booked a cab for someone this morning on another note, uh, on Uber. Okay. And it got me thinking, I would love to know uh, what kind of person are you like? What kind of cab passenger are you? Because I'm the type of Uber passenger where when I'm in the car with my driver, I have to strike up a conversation, otherwise it's just way too awkward. Mm -hmm. And so my my um, my typical line when I'm in the cab is, I like go in there, I'll say hi, and generally the cab driver is Muslim. And then I'll uh, say, oh, my, my opening line is, um, so have you just started or you you just finishing? Because <laughs> like it's like coming and they always like you were like oh yeah so yeah I just started I'm a night I'm going to go I'm like oh, okay cool man do you always do nights and we just try a couple conversations because otherwise it's really awkward man like it's just like so, uh, I'm tr I'm talking about if I'm like by myself in a cab are you the type of person I'd imagine you'd be the type of person who just likes to put his head down it depends who it is work. so if it I'll give salams if it's if it's uh, brother I'll give salams and maybe have a small chat but generally I'll let them just I'll do my own thing in a, in a taxi I think it probably depends on the situation what is the, the driver like because some drivers are, are, are a laugh and you can have a, you know when I was in New York I had I had so many Uber yeah. drivers had so many characters had so many it was really? me and my had so many funny situations in Ubers yeah just having chats with them they were, they all seemed to be like recently just got to the country oh really yeah and they were just like what like nationality was they uh, just like a mixture like there was Bengali brothers so Mahi was chilling chilling with them uh, like Indian like a Malaysian brother there was just like a, a mix they didn't have maybe their, their English down like too well but they were just um, some funny Uber drivers I find Uber drivers are, are different to a, to a normal taxi driver do you ever find that um, There's a different background there. It's a different. Maybe. Like a, it's a different background there. I don't think I've noticed that too much. I've noticed that like no, you don't have to. You don't have to do like a be a You don't have to be a licensed taxi driver for an Uber, do you? No, you don't. I don't That's think. That's what I'm saying. I think you just have to like, just, uh, just just have that the app in the car, isn't it? No, you do. You do oh, you need, need you do need the license. Oh, you do, yeah. Is it, a separate, is it easier is it a to get the license? Uh, Oh, that's okay. that's Abu Bakr. Should we? All right, should we? Let's cut the episode here because I assume yeah. he's here. We got Abu Bakr in the building. Assalamu alaikum, bro. Okay, he's eating a cupcake right now, so I'm just gonna talk Let over him. Enjoy that, man. Yeah, we have. Uh, let's do. A, let's do a nice intro instead of we've got Abu Bakr in the building. We've got um, Abu Bakr, who you guys might know him um, from originally from Roadside to Islam. So there's there's so many revert videos online and like. Um, uh, videos about people's stories about how they came to the deen, how they came to Islam, along with other stuff, um, a lot of dawah videos and, and stuff like that. And then slowly, kind of, I suppose you transitioned from like, from that, and I know you still do that kind of stuff, but mainly kind of push yourself over to charity stuff now. Mm. Um, is that something like you focus on? Is, are you like purposely focusing more on charity and stuff than your YouTube, or are you still like on the YouTube stuff? To be honest with you, because... Um doing the dawah doing roadside to islam in particular for the like last five years or so you know being involved in this dawah i've seen a lot of things change do you get where i'm coming from so but when i first started roadside to islam there wasn't that many dawah projects around and there wasn't that many people you know doing dawah and in particular there was no one doing dawah to um, people from the streets but i know it's over the last year or two it's like for me personally, the Dawa scenes, it, it's become a bit corny. It's like the things I see people doing to get attention, I can't relate with that stuff. I'm, I, mm. like, I'm not from this era, you know, whereby people make videos have, which have no benefit whatsoever. And it's like their channel has just become entertainment. Mm. And I refuse to, to be of those people. Okay. 
you know that's actually one thing that i want to talk to you about so one of the biggest kind of like things that you've always like kind of honed in on me since we've known each other for like the last past year is that you definitely have like a a uh, strong opinion on like vloggers and the idea of vlogging. Mm. I like. I'm not saying you hate all vloggers and vlogging, yeah. but you gen you definitely have like a, a a strong opinion on the concept. Like you you don't you're not like down with the whole vlogging thing, really, are you? Like no, nah, I'm not gonna say. What's your opinion on it? As I'm, a vlogger, I'm asking you. To me, I just feel like there's levels in it in regards to vlogging. I feel. People have taken it to the extremes where, whereby it doesn't even make no sense to me. Mm. Now, if you've got something beneficial to offer in your vlog, then why not? you got, for example, you got your business, you're doing vlogging of your setting up and that's, that's good. That's inspirational. Do you get what I mean? Because someone might see that and say, you know what? Mashallah, or even a non-Muslim, it's not a religious thing, but they might see that and say, you know what? Inspire them to, you know, start up their own business and what have you. Or if you've got a project going on, you're going to an event or you're doing something that's beneficial and you want people to see, that's cool. But we've got to the degree whereby a man's waking up in the morning, showing you in his bed. Then he's brushing his teeth. Then he's just come out of the shower. Then he's putting on his trainers. This is what I'm wearing today. Why do, why do people need to know what you're wearing today, brother? Like, that, I don't understand all that. Mm. And if you're not inclined like that, when I say like you're not religiously bound, then I don't I don't expect nothing different from you. Mm. But when we see brothers who are like you know people who used to be in a dawah scene and calling people to Islam and then they're doing that, I just find it really weird. Another thing I want to touch on is that I know many of these vloggers and I know people who know many of these vloggers and we know many of them are suffering behind the scenes. We got individuals who have got crazy followers, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, whatever it may be. But these guys are the these guys and these sisters are the most insecure people you ever come across. Mm -hmm. How many of them you know suffering from depression? How many of them you know have contemplated committing suicide? But they want to vlog every day talking about my life is great. Your life ain't great. We know your life ain't great because mm -hmm. you're suffering. And without mentioning any names, we see many vloggers who have come to the light and told you openly, I'm suffering from depression. I'm sad, I'm depressed. Why? Because you're living a social media life. It's not real. And you see people making videos because they feel like they have to. They have to make videos every day. Oh my God, it's Wednesday. I have to make that video. Oh my gosh, it's Tuesday. Oh, people are not going like to my, like, my, like my channel or what have you. This is a disease. This is the disease. And a lot of the brothers and sisters are suffering from it. And so for me, when I see that from, from the outside, and obviously because we know many of these brothers are going through this, I just think it's laughable that, you know, you're pushing to the people like your life is so great. But really, truly, it's not. Do you think that like the idea of like depression and anxiety and stuff is linked to the social media thing directly, or do you think like that's like just their personality trait? Bro, I think it's linked directly to social media because social media is pressure. There's no word of a lie. Mm. You know, one person you could do something today and your life could be potentially ruined overnight, just like that. Mm. You could have had all the opportunities in front of you. You make one mistake, the next day all the doors are closed. It's real. Social media ain't a joke, but at the same time we see like, you know, a lot of people kidding themselves to be popular because they feel like pop, being popular pays. And when we look at it realistically, majority of people who are on social media and like vlogging and stuff, there's only a small handful of people making money, mm. to be honest with you. Mm. And you know, when we see people like, for example, we see certain individuals pulling up in events, taking pictures, going on like they're making money. You, you're broke. We know you're broke. You ain't got no peas. You ain't got no money. But you're pretenders of the people to make it look like you've got something that you haven't. And then you start living a lie. Mm. You start living a lie. It's just like many rappers. Anyone will tell you the music industry is entertainment. It's just like WWF, you know. It's not real. But many people who are, who are vlogging and push themselves in front of this life, they're showing you one, one, one way, but in reality, their life is not like that. So it's like, can you imagine they're, you're being trapped inside? You tell people my life is great, but really and truly you're suffering from depression. How do you deal with that? That's why you see sometimes you see these uh, vloggers, yeah, um, having emotional breakdowns mm. and making videos that you, even you as a person, you might watch someone's vlogs and you're like, right, these, these vlogs are all right. But then the majority of them, they get to a stage, they start making videos and you're like, is this, is this person all right? Like, did, he, did he just really do that in the video? Did he really just make this video? Because now you've gone from trying to inspire people now to entertaining people, now to keeping up your channel to a certain level, now to making sure you get as much likes and much um, comments as possible. Look how many times I've seen individuals post things up 
No word of a lie here. Yeah. I've seen people post things up. And in, a, in an hour, two hours, you might be scrolling, they've deleted it. And why? Why did they delete it? Because it didn't get a certain amount of likes they wanted. Okay. It didn't get a amount of comments they wanted. It didn't get a response. And this is a disease. And for me, I just feel like, you know, if you want to vlog and all that, then fine, that's up to you. Everyone for themselves. But in reality, people should realise what's really going on. And many majority of the people who are vlogging, what they show you, that's their life is completely opposite to what they show you in front of the camera, to be honest. Do you think there's a thin line though? Because you're saying that vlogging up to a certain level is like, oh, like not okay, but um, you think it's, it makes sense because if they're like promoting business or trying to inspire, etc., etc. Mm. And then you're saying that there's a line where when you're like literally waking up out of bed and you're showing yourself brushing your teeth. But do you think and do you think that there's a line in the sense that those people who let's say are vlogging for entertainment, yeah, yeah. which you're saying probably like isn't the best thing to do. Yeah. Don't you think that if if that's their means of let's say promoting their business or or, mm. or, or making like like if they don't upload a video, yeah. their brand's not like make it their brands are getting more aware no, 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 and no. therefore they're not do, I understand you know what I'm yes, like, I it's, understand. The, it's the whole business is like making videos every wednesday is the point of the business no no i think you're misunderstanding what i'm saying yeah if you're an individual who does vlogs that like, that's what you've been doing yeah that's what you do in it like and you've got your intention for example we've got some individuals who do vlogs to promote their business yeah, yeah how can i disagree with that i'm saying Good. if your business is the vlog yeah your business your business is the vlogging okay yeah. all right cool no problem but for me, it's like, for example, there's some people who've always been vlogging. That's what they do. Yeah. Do you understand? But I'm I'm looking at particular people that I see in it that who portray a lifestyle that's completely opposite to what they're living. For example, your individual who every day you're vlogging stuff but doesn't make any sense. Like, for example, like I said, you wake up in the morning, you're showing people, hey, guys, I just got out of my bed. Why? I, I I can't I can't get my brain around that. I don't I don't understand what your motive is for that. <laughs> I, hey guys, I just finished brushing my teeth. All right, I'm ironing my clothes. I don't I can't understand that. Like, I get that you don't, I don't understand. You can't understand that. But I'm saying the people who watch that person, they invested in that person's life. I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm just trying to get it from an old theory perspective. I'm saying that they invested in that person's life, so they okay, like so, seeing okay, okay. like. Okay, ask, oh, ask okay. a question. Ask a question. Okay, what benefit do you get from? What benefit can someone get from seeing you? Getting up out of your bed, tell me. If, from, like, from no, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. Getting up out of bed is, let's say if that's like part of your day. I'll, I mean, I'll, <laughs> I'm saying if someone's vlogging their day, yeah, generally their day, you're going to see uh, things like maybe they where they like, um, I don't know, going downstairs to the cafe, but it's not beneficial, is it? But it's just they're vlogging their day. And the, the benefit of like vlogging your day, let's say, is that like you're putting out vlogs, which is like your mm. means of like promoting your brand or whatever. Yeah, but that's not that's not promoting your brand though. No, that specific thing of walking downstairs isn't. Because but that specific thing of walking downstairs is part of your day and your. Right, let me. Your right, day. Okay, look, you know what? Let me not be judgmental in it. At the end of the day, if anybody wants to vlog or anyone, I haven't got the right to say mm. you're doing wrong. I'm not saying I'm not saying that they're doing wrong. Yeah. This is just my opinion, so people should. I have no, the right, I I have I the right that, to have yeah. my opinion. 100%. I'm not saying I've never said. Vlogging is haram. No, 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 in no, Islam, no. it's not. I've never said anything like that. I'm not saying that. So I don't. No one don't take my words wrong. But for me, looking at it from the outside, because I know some of these vloggers are suffering from depression. So mm. many of these Instagram uh, models are suffering from depression and, and, and insecurities to the next level. I see there's a problem. Mm. Do you understand? Because mm. a lot of them wasn't like that. I've seen. I've seen a particular individual in my in front of me have a breakdown. Mm. <laughs> This individual's famous. Mm. You understand? And everyone follows him and interested in like I've seen him have a breakdown. And I had to advise him, like, are you alright, bro? Like, try to comfort him. I had a breakdown because when you're living something what's not real, it will take its toll. Mm. Do you understand? Mm. It's like, for example, you're suffering from depression. You're depressed every day. You're sad. Your life is upside down. But you're in front of a camera every single day pretending like your life's okay. That stage is going to take a toll. Do you understand? So what I'm trying to say is we have to be balanced in life. I'm not saying that people shouldn't vlog. I'm not saying people shouldn't do some sort of entertainment because I'm not going to go on like I don't like entertainment. Who yeah, am I yeah, to yeah. front? I'm not going to come up here and pretend. But you have to understand there's a difference between real life and social media. And I feel like a lot of people get caught in between both worlds. Do you get where I'm coming 100%. from? Because 
me, I can't be honest with you. I n- I'm not pious. I'm not, I wouldn't call myself religious, you know. I'm just trying, isn't it? Mm. But whatever you see on camera is what you see in real life. No one can say, oh, when I saw Abu Bakr, he was acting like this way on the camera. Mm. And then when you see him in person, he acts like a bit different. No chance. But many of these individuals, it's like, they're a different person on camera. And behind the scenes, they're asking for advice. Bro, can you help me? Can you do this? Can you do that? I'm like, bro, do you need to leave the camera alone? That's what you need to do. Because mm. the camera is your problem. Do you understand? Yeah. The, pram- the camera is your problem. And we have to be honest. Like, You can't use social media to deal with your problems. Mm. It's the worst place. Because 98% of the people don't give a damn about your life. Yeah. And they're happy to see you suffering. I'm telling you. I've got followers online. I'm telling you right now. Let me make a mistake. The same people following me with the same people dissing me tomorrow. That's the reality. That's the reality. Yeah. And that's why you see so much famous people, yeah? When they go through some problems, they break down because they thought these followers really love them. Yeah. They thought that these people really support you. Listen, you're the person for today. Tomorrow, they'll move on to someone else. That's social media. And once you understand that, you deal with social media in a different way. And like I said, it depends what you're doing. It's like for you now, let's say for you, you vlog. But I know you're vlogging to support your cause, isn't it? It makes sense. So who's going to argue with that? But when you've got people who are like on Dean and they're trying to do this, it affects their life because mm. now what's your intention? You know, one minute I'm giving dawah, next minute you're, you're confused. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And that takes a toll. You know what you're doing. You never say to yourself, I'm giving dawah. You know what I mean? But at the same time, you're a Muslim. You have to represent yourself in a certain way. There's certain things you can do and you can't do. But at the same time, your intention is not like dawah, so to speak. But we've got individuals whose vlogs are dawah and it don't make no sense. Do you, mm. get where I'm, do you get where I'm coming mm. from? And they're doing stupid stuff in their videos. You know what I mean? They're doing dumb stuff in the videos. And you can see these people are trapped. They're confused. And that's just my take on it anyway, to be honest with you. What do you reckon, Sam? Like, they are, there's definitely like... One thing I can definitely agree with is that with like picking up the camera, putting yourself on social media and stuff, there's a lot of fitness involved and it's definitely not like the safest thing to do if you're trying to like, pres- like preserve your Dean, I suppose. Do you think we should have more people in social media who are upon the Quran and Sunnah who are good examples and good role models who are vlogging? Do you, do you think that should exist or do you think it's just it's people don't really need to see behind the scenes of someone's life? I, mm-hmm. just, f- I just feel like sometimes we give people too much stuff to use against us, you, you get where I'm coming yeah. from. So, for example, you're 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 exposing your life to people who don't know you. Do you, do you get where I'm coming from? Like deep, like your family, your kids, your wife, your mom, your dad, the children, and you're just like, for me, this is my personal opinion. I don't want no one to take me wrong. Mm. I just think I can't. I, I just think that's crazy. You feel like it's keeping private stuff private. But I just feel like I'm not going to walk on the street yeah. and walk up to someone I don't know or go in a shop and say to everyone, look, this is my daughter, this is my son, this is my wife, this is my dad, this is my... I'm not, I would never do something like that. Do you know what I mean? And majority of the people who, who do this on social media would never do this in real life. So I feel like sometimes you should preserve yourself, you know, when you're online because sometimes you're giving people ammunition to destroy, potentially destroy mm. your life. Do you get where I'm coming from? Because... First and foremost, look at it like this now. You're, show, you're showing everyone your life is honky-dory. Like, it's the great life. Then you've got people in, uh, watching you whose lives are depressed, they're sad. But really and truly, you're not showing them the reality of your life. You know, you're just showing them what you want them to see. You understand? An image of yourself so you can become more popular, so you can, you know, get a bigger following and what have you. But in reality, it's not true, you know, what you're going through. And then you see these individuals, when they go through a situation, a problem, they crash, they're, they're like the worst. They hit rock bottom because you're living a lifestyle what's not true. And you know when you start living a lifestyle for so, for so long, you start to believe it. You start to believe it, you know. And like I said to you, the, the, for me, the saddest thing for me is that we know many of these social media public figures are suffering behind the scenes. It's scary, bro. It's scary, it's scary. And then you see them keep uploading more videos. It's a disease. It's like an addiction to upload. Oh, I've got to tell everyone what I'm doing. Guys, I'm, here I am today. Oh, I'm doing this today. Da, 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 da. It's, a, it's a madness. You know, so I'm, all, my advice to people is this. If you're going to vlog, you're going to vlog. Mm. You, you get where I'm coming from. You're going to vlog, you're going to vlog. 
Uh, so, so what, what, what's your advice though? Because the, the majority of the listeners who are listening to this are yeah. consumers, not vloggers, yeah? yeah, yeah so yeah. what would your advice be to consumers and like, re- like people who don't vlog, but they watch vloggers and they maybe invest a lot of their emotions into vloggers? Do you know what I mean? What would your advice to them be? Like, don't get too emotionally attached or... Don't, don't, first and foremost, 100% don't get emotionally attached to anyone, mm. to any public figure. Do you understand? Because like I said, everyone comes with good and comes with bad. Everyone makes mistakes. You know, obviously there's people, I'm, I don't know all the vloggers in the world, but there must be vloggers who are inspirational. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So you're following someone who's inspirational and helping you because, bro, you could be sad. You could be depressed. You could watch someone's video and you can get up. That's the honest truth. You might watch a vlog and it inspires you. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, You've got to be balanced in it and look at these individuals and make sure you understand that you could be watching you're watching something what's potentially fake you know because someone's showing you something that what they want to show you in it but remember at the same time many of these people yeah many of these people who who their whole life is front of the camera are depressed and i don't like i said i'm not here to expose anyone but we know you've even seen online vloggers come out openly i'm suffering from depression my life is down. My this, that, da, 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 da. But you've been following this person for like two years thinking their life is sweet. You understand? Mm. Because when they was down, they couldn't tell no one because it's an image. They got portrayed because now this is their lifestyle. You know, entertainment, entertaining their followers. Now, if they've got people messaging them saying they're depressed. They can't then go and say the person, I'm depressed too. Do you know what I mean? So they've got to uplift and show a lifestyle what's not true. Mm. So for me... The reason why I come with this stance is because I've seen the con- consequences from it. When I first started seeing people vlog, I saw some vlogs I thought, oh, that's a bit stupid. But I've seen some vlogs that I thought were good. But over the years, as I've seen people suffering from depression and their lives uh, collapsing because of online pressure and what have you, this is when I thought to myself, you know what? Social media is dangerous. And you know, being in the public eye comes with responsibilities, bro. You understand? Mm. Whether you like it or not, once you put yourself out there, you have to be ready to be criticised. You have to be ready that someone's going to come out the woodworks from nowhere, expose something that you never thought was going to be exposed. This is, this, is, this is the life of social media, mm. you know? And many, many people who indulge in social media don't understand that. It's like, for example, you've got individuals in telling people we should pray. But these individuals struggling to pray. So why are you killing yourself to be in front of the camera and telling people to pray when you know you're, you're struggling yourself? It don't make no sense to me. Mm. Do, do you know what I mean? Mm. I'm not saying that because if you're going through something bad in life that you shouldn't tell people to do good. For example, I'm not saying that if I wasn't praying five times a day, doesn't mean I shouldn't tell you not to pray. I'm not, it doesn't mean that. But at the same time, once you put yourself in front of the camera and you're always telling people, do this, do that, do this, do that, do this, do that, and your life is opposite to that, what, what, what does that make mm. you? Do, you? do you get where I'm coming mm. from? So this is, this, is my, this is how I see it. You know, at the end of the day, depression ain't no joke. Yeah. Or lie, depression ain't no joke. I've never suffered from depression. I've been sad though. <laughs> I'm not gonna tell you I've been mm, sad. Mm, mm, I've been mm. everyone's been sad. I've been sad. I've been down, but because of doing dawa and doing mentoring and stuff like that, when you speak to people, you know I've never been through the stuff that mm. people wear, whereby they wake up in the morning. Like we've got some of these public figures, bro, who have woke up in the morning they can't get out of their bed, bro. Real stuff. You understand? Yeah, yeah. Real stuff. Yeah. They wake up. They don't, they, they, their life is upside down. Two days later, they're in front of the camera. Telling them, <laughs> I'm going to the shop. Oh, I just don't understand that. I don't, I, don't, I, I don't understand that. I feel like these people are potentially putting themselves six foot under. Because yeah. you know you're suffering. Leave the camera alone. Yeah. So that's how I look at it anyway. So potentially some people are, t- are too unstable to really put themselves out there. Generally. 100%. Yeah. Cam- Listen, social media, cam- being being a public figure is not for everyone. Mm. Well, like, listen, the things I know now, if I knew this before, you'd never would have saw me in front of a camera. That's the truth. You understand? Because I've experienced things. Yeah. Do you get what I mean? And it's like, even for myself, when I first started doing Dawa, I don't like being known. I don't even like it. Or lie, I don't like it. Yeah, I know it. you're the one. <laughs> I don't like it. Do you understand? Yeah. I don't, I don't, because I, it's not me. But obviously it comes with this, but when mm. you start these things, sometimes you don't understand. You've got a good intention, yeah. you've got a good heart, you want to do something good. Yeah. But then when you start seeing the responsibility it comes with, you start thinking, wow, you know what? 
I could potentially put one thing online and I could misguide people. Yeah, yeah. Mm. That is pressure. Yeah. So you, you, you're aware of the responsibility it, come, it comes what? with, yeah? So that's why you are so kind of private and you're so anti all this kind of, this commotion of people being out there and being unstable and... and, and you, look, there's some people who are doing it who are stable, then let them do their but you thing. Would, you would agree it's important that there is strong um, public figures and role models for the Muslim youth and general. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. We, need, we need role models for brothers. We need role models for sisters. We've seen the times now. Uh, let's, let me give you an example. When I first became Muslim, all the people I used to come across wanted to either study in Egypt or go to Medina. Do you understand? I was off the camp. We went to Egypt. Mm. Me and loads of brothers went to Egypt. Loads of other brothers who were more advanced than us. Did better than mass? us. Huh? Did you go with mass? No, I was there before mass. Okay. So, but while he was there, while he went out there, I was there. Okay. But a lot of our brothers, mashallah, excelled past that. Went to Medina, went to Yemen, wherever. They went to different places and studied. And, you know, one of the things what used to inspire me is when I became Muslim, I used to look at the Muslim sister, I say, oh, these girls have got haya, the modesty, mm. they're, they're different. Do you understand? But if you look at the sisters today, I'm, look, you know, at the end of the day, I'm not attacking those sisters. It, it is what it is. I'm mm. just saying how it is. But for me, I just feel like, well, we, we, we have an ummah, we've changed. Do you understand? Like, brothers, they're just in the video, turn into this cycle. I don't know what we've become, you know what I mean? But social media has changed us in totality. The Muslim youth, we've changed. Do you know what I mean? Because now, like I said to you, when I became Muslim, everybody went to study. Sisters were covering up and trying their best to fail, lost one to Allah. Now, everybody just wants to be popular by any means necessary. Do you understand? But I feel like it's for some of these public figures, especially the ones with big followings, to come out and tell the people what's really going on. Do you know what I mean? How some of them are, their life is not how it's how it, how how people think it is. How they're not making as much money as people think. Because some of them are, but majority of them are not. Mm. You know, majority of them are not. To be honest with you, how many people still buy followers online? Mm. Like Subhanallah, I never forget. I think about two years ago when Instagram um done some like kind of revamp. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everyone lost like thousands of followers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. I just, yeah. There was some artists who yeah. had like five million followers. Yeah. And they didn't even have 100,000 followers after yeah, that. Yeah. So it just goes to show mm. that social media is so fake. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's so fake. Like, bro, I went into some people's pages and I was astonished. Like, they lost all their, like some people lost all their followers. Even mm. in the news, I can't remember. There was one, I think some female singer, she was left with like 100 followers or something after no that. Way. And she had millions. Yeah, because bro, any, everyone is killing themselves. Mm. To, uh, to be that person. Come and, right. and Musa said a statement to me. I think it was Musa. Someone said a statement to me the other day. It's an old school statement. You know, before we used to say, um, technology can't keep up with us. You know, every time, phone's too slow. Computer's too slow. This is too slow. But now, the humans, we can't keep up with technology. Mm. Do you understand? Because it's overwhelmed us so much that all of us, I'm including myself, I'm not trying to, I'm not free from this. I'm a part of the thing. I'm a part of the problem as well. I'm involved. You get what I'm saying? Because I'm in social media. But our phone, we can't survive without our phones. Mm. We can't survive without internet. It's true. Bro, we can like, take away internet from us. Mm. I was watching on the news the other day. Yeah? Um, I don't know what country it was. I can't remember what country. They took in internet away from them for about three months because there was some political stuff going on and the government shut down internet in totality. And it was on, uh, on Al Jazeera. And they brought back the internet. Everyone was out on the street celebrating. The people said, my life was disaster. My life was dead. No internet. And that's how, that's, that's the people we've become, you know? Mm. So all I'm saying is, look, social media has got its benefits because Alhamdulillah, I've seen people change their lives on social media. You know, through, via social media, people have set up good businesses, be able to feed their families, you know, open up windows, opportunities to other people, you know? So it, that, that's the good side. But, at the same time, I believe that when we're online, when we're public figures, we need to be honest with ourselves and mm. be ourselves. Don't try and be something that you're not, you know? Don't pretend to the, don't pretend to your viewers because potentially you're destroying yourself. And that's my take on that. Mashallah. My powerful. Moving on swiftly. Uh, do you have One more thing about yeah, social ahead, media. What do you use your social media for now, Abu Bakr? Is it? Do you still promote? Are you still doing roadside Islam interviews? Are you promoting spot through it? What do you generally use it for? Well, for me, obviously, 
I use it for like little reminders here and there. I use it to promote spot. I still do Royal Society Islam, but not as much as before. Because like I said, you know, like people always message me, ah, how can you ain't uploading no video? It's been a month, it's been two weeks. And I always try to explain to people, listen, my channel is not an entertainment channel. You understand? Don't expect the video every Wednesday. Don't affect, expect the video every Friday. I don't work like that. You understand? Because already, man's battling with their intentions every day. Mm -hmm. Why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? If I start getting into that role where I have to bring out a video every week, it becomes problematic for me. For other people, it might not be. But for me, it becomes problematic. That's why sometimes, there's been a stage, bro. One time, for nearly a whole year, I didn't upload no video. People thought I was going mad. But I had to do that for myself because then I start asking myself, what am I doing? Am I doing this for views? Am I doing this for likes? Or am I doing it for benefit people? If I put out a video, bro, and it gets 100 views, and it benefits someone, I don't care. I'm happy with that. Then rather w worried about consistently putting out my videos and getting hundreds of thousands of views. And, you know, my intentions are all ruined because at the end of the day, it's all about intentions. If I meet a lost one to Allah on that day and my intentions were for views and likes, then I've wasted all my time. Do you mm. know what I'm saying? What am I getting from that? You know, what am I going to get on that day? So I have to make sure my intentions are pure and clear. That's why I don't upload videos on people's demand. I upload them when I when I feel like I'm ready to upload them. If people watch it, they watch it. If they don't, they don't. But it's always someone who will be able to come across something that we do, mm. whether we know about it or we or, or we don't know about it. You know, there's always people who would watch these type of videos. But I can't work. I don't. I, I'm not like I can't work on demand. Do you know what I mean? I can't work on demand unless I'm working or doing something like that. So you're still doing mm. interviews though. Yeah, I still do interviews. Yeah. I, I, right now, I'll be honest with you, I've got about 10 or 15, maybe about 15 brand new videos. Edited, ready. Edited, they're on my hard drive. Just ain't uploaded them. Seriously. <laughs> you understand? I just ain't uploaded them, bro. <laughs> no word of a lie, they're fresh. So, you know what I mean? Inshallah, you should post them when you're ready, Inshallah. There's, nah, def I will, there's, I will. Definitely, there's definitely a lot of benefit on your page, man. No, I will, I will. Because you know what? To be honest with you, because no one's really doing street that well, I have. I feel like I have got some kind of yeah, you're the original, yeah. Responsibility. Yeah, I agree. Do you know what I mean? But at the same time, for me, the work that we're doing in Africa now is a bit more important, mm -hmm. you know, because I feel like it, for my heart, it's more pure, mm. it's more cleaner, and I feel like it will be more beneficial for me in the hereafter because I feel like I've got a bigger impact, you know. With this, with the YouTube and stuff like that and the social media, you, like, you have to keep up with people, and I'm trying to... Fade you know, away. Yeah, I'm trying to yeah. not fade away. I don't want to fade away because without social media, <laughs> no, no, no. We have away. to be honest. Without social media, without obviously first and foremost our last month to Allah, but without social media, yeah. we would know how would this project would have got built. Right. There's people from online who supported man to, to build the project. Right. So I can't deceive myself and go on like yeah, yeah I fade away. But at the same time, I just got to be balanced in it and don't let it consume me too much. You know. That's it. So how's the project in Africa going? Bro, it's going amazing. Mashallah. Bro. Allah, it's going amazing. Flying out tomorrow, right? Yeah, I'm out tomorrow, inshallah. How long are you away for? About five weeks. Nice. So, yeah, it's I, I, it's crazy because, to be honest with you, it, it's not even been a year yet since we, we started building this project. And what we achieved with Allah's help and obviously people online and people, the brothers and sisters, and even non-Muslims who are supporting us, it's amazing, you know. You know, when you've got, you know, pure intentions, inshallah, Allah, Allah can do a lot for you. You know, Allah can support you and help you. You know, so. it's unfortunate because we're gonna be doing an event for Spot, like when you're gone, which yeah. it would be nice to have you there. But I mean, it's always gonna film it and stuff. And you no got worries. lucky escape, we just all thinking, innit? No, 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 <laughs> no worries, Zaki. Obviously, yeah. I trust the brothers, so I leave a lot to do what you got to do, inshallah. Yeah, inshallah. When we spoke on the phone, um, you were kind of discussing the interview we did with MB and about when we kind of went into some topics with Muslim Blau about like, um, like particularly whether he finds that it's harder to get married as a black revert. Yeah. And you were discussing that like potentially we could have gone into it a bit more and it was like certain... We didn't because we cause we may have skimmed over it, yeah. but do you think that like speaking on that topic, do you think that that is something that is like a big issue in in the community? Me, I don't think it's a big issue. Oh, you don't? No, I don't think it's a big issue. I feel like I'm surprised because when we spoke on the phone, I thought you. No, 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 no. What I what I was explaining to you on the phone is that I didn't hear it personally. Oh, okay. My brother narrated to me that when he listened to the podcast, right? Or I don't know if the YouTube video pop. I'm not sure which one it was. He said that. Something along the lines when MB was on here, he was talking like something about divorce with reverts, that or something about um, 
reverts are known for divorcing or known for marrying. I can't, I can't even remember what I said. I think about. you were saying there's negative stereotypes aside to maybe or something yeah, like that, like about like that, that oh, are they just going to get divorced anyway or yeah. something like that? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when I when I heard that, and me and the brother were talking about it, I said, I think this is, this, is, this, is, this is not the truth. Do you understand? Obviously, there's revert Muslims who marry and divorce. But is there more reverts than born Muslims? No way. If we go into the Muslim community, if we look at the divorce in the Muslim community, it's second to none. Mm. Let me give you an example. In Egypt, I can't give you the, the exact statistics, but even the president of Egypt said they want to ban people saying talak. Oh, he said really? that. I saw it was about three months ago. I saw it in the news. It was just so common. Yeah, because they said they said in one year maybe over a hundred thousand people got divorced. In it, because people, you know, they get angry and just divorce quickly. But what I'm trying to say is, yeah, that. I feel like it's unfair and unjust that a lot of people, when they're talking about reverts, they try to like kind of push us under the bus. Oh, we're known for we're known for marrying, divorcing. Oh, many of us become Muslim and leave the religion. Okay, barakallah fikum. Now, if you look in the Muslim community, let's look at some of the issues in the Muslim community. How many people in the Muslim community you see suffering from abuse? Are they from revert? Are they from revert communities or born Muslim communities? How many, how many people in the Muslim community do we see that people are married and husband and wife don't even have intercourse three, four, five years? Am I, do you know about this stuff or am I talking of, of no, 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 my right, oh, yeah. Okay. Known thing in the community. How many people we know in the Muslim community dealing with prostitutes? Mm. So when I hear all these things, it upsets me because I feel like, obviously, us weavers, we've got issues. Yeah. Of course we've got issues. Do you understand? But at the same time, many people in the, in the born Muslim community have got loads of issues as well. Look at the, look at the situation on Riba. Riba is normal in the Muslim community. Mm. Do you understand? Majority, amongst the born Muslim. You go to majority of Muslims' houses, what's their house on? It's on Riba. But that's Adi, no problem. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? But they're always trying to highlight the issues that some of us Rebats have. Yeah, we have got issues because... Many of us, we come from lifestyles, not all of us, because you can't say everyone who's a revert came from a bad lifestyle. But at the end of the day, where many of us grew up without any culture and stuff like that, many of the things that we believed were okay is when you become Muslim, that you realize it's not okay. Because you have to understand, when we accept this religion of Islam, it's a complete way of life. Islam is a complete way of life in totality, even in regards to how you go to the toilet. Everything changes. Do you get what I'm trying to say to you? So, we as reverts, we have to adapt to a new lifestyle. But as we see, there's many ills and problems in the Muslim community that don't get highlighted. Racism in general. I'm not talking about marriage because sometimes we see some brothers um, talking about, oh, you know, because uh, I'm a reaver or because I'm black or because I'm whatever, that the family doesn't accept me. Well, for me, my advice to anyone like that, there's many women in the world. You understand? There's many Muslim women in the world. Don't put all your eggs in one basket, number one. Number two, I believe that sometimes some brothers as well, they might throw the race card when it's not necessary that. Because you have to understand, for a father, he has the duty to pick someone that he believes is good for his daughter. Do you understand what I'm trying to say to you? If a father invested in their child, you know, all that, all that child's life until that child reached the adult, then a man just wants to come in and take the daughter. I don't think that's right. I don't think that's right. And if someone comes, if you go to a father, or you go to a family, they don't accept you, you can't be like, oh, oh, why shouldn't they accept me? I pray or whatever. They have, they have, um, what do you want to call it? Yeah, right. They want, they, they, maybe they dream for their daughter to marry someone who's a particular way, who's doing certain things. Doesn't the father have a right to do that? I believe so. Do you know what I mean? But obviously, being openly racism, racist and stuff like that, obviously that's not permissible in our religion. But sometimes I feel like when people get rejected, they automatically think that maybe it's because of the race card. But at the same time, the dad might think, okay, I want my daughter to marry someone from my culture because it will be easier for me to relate with that with with with, with him and and um and the family. <laughs> Why can't anyone you can't understand that? Do you, do you get where I'm coming from? So all I'm saying to say to you in totality in regards to that, I just feel like we need to be just in it and be fair. Reverts have got issues. Muslims have got issues. We all got issues. Don't try and always push us under the bus and blame us for stuff. You know, even down to little things like extremism. I've heard people saying, oh, these people become Muslim. They don't understand the religion. Come on, man. Come on. Mm. If we look, if we really, really, really look between the lines and we see people who are who are doing 
serious extremism stuff and whatnot. Majority of them are born Muslim. Do you know what I'm trying to say to you? Now, I'm not saying born Muslims are extremists. No, you, no, I'm not saying that. But when we look at the statistics, is it is it more revert Muslims doing this than people who are born in religion? It's clear to see that it's it's not more reverts than it is born Muslim. So I just believe that we should be just in it, you know, and be fair to one another, and don't try and you know paint all the reverts with one brush, you know. I don't think I, I don't think I don't think that's fair. So when he was discussing that on the show, I just thought you know what, instead of him saying that you know, uh, yeah, us reverts, we we we, we um, put this we, we put this on ourselves. I can say yeah, we've said some reverts who do some bad stuff, but at the same time. Many born Muslims do bad stuff as well. And these things never get highlighted. But the things that we do as reverts always gets, you know, highlighted and used as an excuse for other social ills in our community. And I, I, don't, I don't think that's fair. What kind of um, social, social stigma do you think? Where, where do you think it originates from at this kind of you know, viewpoint? Do you think like, the videos are to blame, like in terms of like, documentaries and stuff? Because you see a lot of these, like... Um, No, I don't think so because if you if you if you look at it now, anytime you've been on on TV or you've been on the news or whatever, and you've seen Muslims, yeah, doing a madness, yeah, how many reverts is there? One, two. How many born Muslims is there? So I don't, I don't understand it. I don't understand it. I don't want to pinpoint any um, people's race or whatever. But you think now? I'm asking you, Faisal. I'm asking you, Sam. Think now, yeah of any time you've watched the news and you've seen extremists. Like, let's say in the UK, they classify, they said these people are extremists. Majority of the people on the video, who, what, what, not what, what race they are, I'm not saying what race they are. Yeah. Are they born Muslims or reverts? Well, I don't think the video is centralised around them. I think the video is centralised around the people that are reverts. So I've seen that. Or, may, or may, I, maybe- Yeah, the, it's true. Maybe, it's true. Maybe the one or two reverts stand out a bit more exactly. though, because- yeah. Okay, I know. They do stand out. Yeah. They do stand out. Because- yeah. There might be a black brother there, yeah. or there might be a white brother yeah. there. So it does stand out. But I'm saying, put that aside. Just recap. Yeah. It's true, yeah. How many reverts did you see, and how many boom did you see? Why don't you see that? No, okay, put it's, that aside. I'm saying, yeah, it's true. It's media, true, it's listen, true. listen. I'm involved in media. Anyone can create a video. Anyone who creates a video has an intention behind it. You understand? For example, just like this interview now, if Faisal had had intentions to ruin me. He could know how to interview me for an hour or two and afterwards edit it for three, four minutes and I could potentially destroy my life. That's like when you go to some of these big media platforms, they'll interview for one hour. But how much of the interview goes out? Two minutes, mm. three minutes, mm. four minutes. You understand? Because that's how media works. You understand? They can put you in a position, make you say stuff. That's the power of the media. Do you get where I'm coming from? But what I'm trying to say to you is I understand that when the reverts put amongst these people, they stand out. But I'm saying put that aside now. We're not, we're, not, we're not using that as an excuse. You just think now and think to yourself, anytime you've seen marches with people going crazy or whatever, how many of Muslims have you seen? If there's 100 people that you, ah, let's say there's 30 people in front of the screen, how many reverts? Not many. That is apparent. Obviously, anyone yeah. could be a reverb yeah, that you yeah. don't know, but what's apparent? Yeah, yeah. yeah. How many? You see three? Mm. You see four? It's always like one or two. The rest, you can see like... Allah knows best, they're born into the religion. So how come that stuff don't get highlighted? But they want to blame us, it don't make no sense. So I just feel like we just need to be just in it. Let's just be honest, isn't it? We the reverts have got issues in our community, but listen, the born Muslims have got issues in their community. There's no shadow of that. You can brush it under the bus all you want. There's so much issues in the Muslim community, you understand? And we're scared to discuss it. Hmm. We're scared to be honest about it. Look at look. I don't want to bring up the How do you think it should be discussed? Or do you think that there should be like platforms where people are just open with it? Like, for example, stuff like this. Or do you think like, because clearly, yes, there are issues. There, there's definitely issues like um, there's things that in the, in the community that just are not discussed or like there's topics that like people want to stay away from. Mm. But these topics might benefit people like or younger people or people who, who, who don't have an understanding. Mm. What do you think the best way about that? Like is just people like kind of making videos, putting it on YouTube. I, I feel like, I feel like, for example, you're Asian, innit? Mm. You understand your community better than I can understand mm. it. I might see something and try and address it 
But because I'm not from that community, people might take offense to it. Mm. Do you get what I mean? Even if it's true what I'm saying, people might take offense to it. So if you addressed it, some people might take offense, but there's less chance of people getting angry because you're from that community, you're from that background, so you kind of understand what you're saying. I feel like people from a particular background and public figures need to come out and address the issues in their community. Do you get what I'm trying to say to you? Talk about it, discuss it, and help people because people are suffering. Like, we know many people in the Muslim community are, are getting abused. I'm telling you, Ak. I'm telling you. I get sisters messaging me. Not as much anymore because I'm not, how can I say, me, uh, media savvy as, as I used to be. But before, every other day, sisters messaging me. Uncle's done this to me. Cousin's done this to me. Da 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 It's all underneath the brush. Can't tell the family. What's going on? So these people are suffering. How many times brothers are marrying sisters who have been abused? Mm. Do you understand? And they didn't even knew. Do you know what I mean? So I just feel like we need to be open with our problems. It's not going on like we're perfect, you know? Islam is perfect, the Muslims are not. But if we address our issues and discuss them, then inshallah we can find means to solving our problems as a community. As a community, you understand? But every time we brush in our, thing, our, brush in our problems under the carpet, I feel like it makes the situation worse. So for example, look at it like this. A young brother, a young sister messages me. Oh, Abu Bakr, I'm going through this, I'm going through that, I need some help. Obviously, I'm in their system and do whatever I can. But why can't that person go to their own family and ask them for help? Why? Because many a times, the families are busy doing other stuff. Many a time, the families don't understand what's going on with their child. How many brothers we know, they walk through their door, they don't even know, the family doesn't know, this brother maybe nearly lost his life today. Someone tried to stab him. Someone tried to shoot him. All this type of stuff because they can't relate with their families. And then what happens is these young people start contacting people they see in the public eye. Now, if they contact the wrong person, imagine the advice that it can give this individual. Do you know what I mean? So for me, I just feel like, let's say, for example, you, you address your community. You spoke to the families and said, be open to your truth. They're going to listen to you mm. because they know, right, this guy's got a media following. He's someone... He's someone that young people listen to. So when you start giving them this type of advice, they'll take on board what you're saying is serious. But if no one's addressing these issues, no one, they don't, they don't take, how can they take it serious? Because they think it's not something serious. Do you get what I mean? So I just feel like individually, we need to start doing more for our communities. Do you understand? We need to do more. I remember when, we, when last year when we first met, when you came down to the old office, you said to me, uh, you said the similar thing to me, you said that people need to essentially like stay in their lanes, like in the sense that people know the problems in their own communities. And you specifically said like, if me, like Abu Bakr, gave advice to people, like stop having such extravagant weddings, yeah. like it wouldn't make sense because in your community, that's not like a big thing. But mm. in my community, for example, as an Asian, that's a big thing. Like people are spending more money than they actually have on weddings. Yeah. And so you were saying that it's better if everyone stays in a lane and like, like, in the sense that it would it would make more sense if I was to, for example, uh, give a like say like why are we spending so much money on extravagant weddings, but it wouldn't make sense for me to kind of like give advice to people who are living on road. Right, look, that's look, what you said. Right, look at example when you did the vlog yeah. about when you were getting married. Yeah, and you were talking about you're not gonna do expensive wedding and all that. Yeah. That's, that's that's beneficial. Right. Do you get what I'm trying to say to you? Because people watch that and be thinking, raw. They expect what they expecting from you. They're yeah, expecting yeah, yeah. by default. That you're gonna do some big wedding. So when people see that, they're thinking, wow, how come he's not gonna do it? So they will listen. Mm. You know, you didn't go deep and start giving a big cook bar, but you were telling people, look, you don't wanna do that. Mm. Do you know what I mean? You're having a simple wedding, you're just gonna keep it simple, friends, family, whatnot. You're not trying to spend a hundred grand on a wedding and stuff mm. like that and put yourself in potential problems. And me, obviously, me watching that, I respect that. I said, right, mashallah. You didn't have to do that, but that's a form of dawah. That's a form of telling people you don't have to do that. Many brothers and sisters, ah. They're under pressure. I know brothers act. They're telling me, bro, I'm getting married. I don't have the money. I have to borrow the money. I have to do this, do that, do that, do that. SubhanAllah. And then when they get married, they got no way to live. The brother's got no money. Now he's got to look after his wife. All for what? You know? But at the same time, who am I to come out and say that? Because at the end of the day, I can't relate to that. Mm. I, I can't understand that. Another thing, I give you an example. I said, look, enough people, enough uh, brothers and sisters said, you know what? They're not really comfortable with um, getting married and then um, their, their, their wife living in the house with the mum and that and then the mum and the wife has to look after the mum and dad and all that type of stuff. So brothers are asking me, oh, can I do a reminder about that? I said, ah, how can I do a reminder about that? I don't understand that. 
I'm not from that culture. I don't get it. So I'll do injustice if I talk about that because I don't understand, you know? So it's better that I stay in my lane and I don't talk about that. It's better I message you and say, Faisal, you know what? Enough people will be messaging me and telling me about this stuff. You think you could do a little reminder? I'll share it. You do a little reminder discussing this issue because when you talk about it, people can understand. I'm not saying that I couldn't talk about it. I could talk about it, but it's going to be harder for people to relate to what I'm saying because they know I don't know what I'm talking about. Mm. I can just say realistically, it's not good, the pressure, da, da, da. I can just talk in general, but you can go in depth like, listen, this is this, this is that, da, 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 because you come from that background, you see it. You might have cousins, you might have brothers, you might have sisters or whatever who have gone through that. I haven't, mm. do you know what I mean? So why am I going to talk about that? It's just like, for example, you got individuals talking about marriage advice, but they've never been married. Do, do you get where I'm coming from? Like. I'm not saying like a scholar or something. I'm talking about layman like me, someone like me, a layman, you know. A person of knowledge is different because obviously he studied the religion and he understands things that we don't understand. But I'm just talking about layman, YouTuber, talking about all this advice, that da, 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 da. but he just, the individual doesn't know nothing about that. Do you know what I mean? It don't make no sense. So I believe like collectively as a community, everyone has their positions to play. Our last one to Allah is giving gifts and abilities to everyone, you know what I mean? Individually, we've all got different things that we can do and that we can't do. So I think like collectively, if everyone worked together, obviously people who have got the same understanding with everyone can't work together. It's not really as simple as that. But people who have got the same understanding and what have you, then we can help one another in a better way, you know, because then our advice will be more sound. Do you get where I'm coming from? So if people talk about the things that they knew, then it would be better instead of them talking about things they don't know. You know, it's just like Allah SWT says, when you don't know, ask those who know. So don't be pretending that you know everything. Not everyone knows everything. Do you understand what I'm trying to say to you? As mankind, just stay in your position and be, and be happy in your lane. You know, when you're trying to jump in everyone's lane, you destroy yourself. You know, so yeah. You also tend to speak a lot. As we, we, me and Sam were speaking um, last week about uh, we're excited to have you on and stuff, and we're looking forward to having you on. When you first of all, we knew didn't we, that like we was gonna have some deep conversations and stuff. And what we were saying is that you're one of the people that um, reminds us a lot about death. Like not in a rude way, but you like to talk about death a lot. But uh, uh, and it's 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 important in the way you do it. So like, I don't want to like, push too, too much to your face, but what I'm trying to get at is like, let's say if we, me and you having a discussion on the phone yeah. and you might be like, even this discussion me and you had the other day on the phone, yeah? We was on the phone and you were talking about, oh, I'm flying out to Gambia. But you didn't just say, oh, I'm flying out to Gambia on Friday. You was like, I'm flying out to Gambia on Friday if Allah permits me to live that long. Yeah. And just by se- adding that onto your sentence, it reminds a person of death a lot. Yeah. Do you, is it, you talking about death so much, is that something that's, natural to you or is it something that you have to remind yourself to do so that mentally you can keep reminding yourself i'm not promised life forever i'm not promised life forever is it do you have to like because it has an impact on everyone around you which is positive for me obviously i have to remind myself because sometimes like i said i'm involved in this social media life and when you're involved in this social media life when you get consumed inside it you forget about everything do you know what i mean like your mind gets blown away by some of the things that you see online the second thing is you have to remember is that I'm a sinner, bro. <laughs> I commit loads of sins. So I have to remind myself about these things. Allah, stuff Allah. When I speak to someone, yeah, inshallah, have a lot. Because I have to keep reminding myself that. So you, you have know to what? remind yeah, yourself. Of course I have yeah, to, yeah. bro. I have to remind myself because shaitan's job is to make me not, rem- not, not to ponder about these things. Yeah. Because shaitan don't want you to think about these things. He wants you to think about dunya, um, this life, relaxing, everything being easy. And then before you know it, death just comes. And you know, death comes unexpectedly, unless some people, I would say, are kind of fortunate who, you know, maybe, I'm not saying fortunate, I, I don't want to say it in that way, but sometimes when someone is t- diagnosed with something and they know their life's coming to an end, you see the people changing. Mm. Some people don't get that. Some people just die suddenly, you know what I mean? So at the same time, as a believer, we have to, you know, remember death a lot, but not to the degree that you're talking about death every day because your life will be depressed. If I think about death all the time, what am I gonna, I'm just gonna be stuck in my room, mm. going mad, mm. do you understand? So it's not about that, it's about being balanced, isn't it? Do you know, not, not thinking about death all the time, but also contemplating it because, you know, at the end of the day, we know that's a reality. You know, no matter what happens, that we're gonna die. You know, Allah tells us in the Quran, Kul hum nasin mok. every soul is gonna taste death. So it's a reality, it's something that we need to think about, but, we need to think about it in a constructive way, not in a way that, oh, I'm going to die, what am I going to do? But inshallah, make it be a means for you to do good because no one knows when their time's going to go. I could be here today, I'm talking all this before, you know, I'm saying Gambia, boom, 
you and I, I'm dead. That's the end of it. Do you know what I mean? So I feel like we prepare for everything in life. You know, wake up in the morning, get dressed, iron our clothes, brush our teeth, whatever. But I just feel like many of us just don't prepare for death, innit? Do you know what I mean? And when I say prepare for death, I don't mean it in a bad way, but we know we want to meet our Lord with something. If you're a person who says you believe, you want to meet Allah with something, can it? Do you understand? Because it's like, the way I look at it is like this. Anyone who's going to court, you got a case. You try to get the best solicitor and you get all your papers, you get everything intact before you turn up. Mm. So I look at I, I, I look at that as the same as me and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I know I've got loads of sins, like sins that, okay, if I think about it, my bre- I can, <laughs> I can <laughs> I can collapse in this room right now. You understand? So I've got to contemplate about this meeting of Allah and try and do something to push myself to do good that I hope that, okay, I'm going to meet Allah with this. I know I've got to answer for these sins, but maybe Allah will say, you know what? Yes, you did all these sins, but because you done that, I forgive you for that. Just give myself a case because there's no deed that we can do that would admit you into Jannah. It's not the deed. It's only your person will be admitted to future Jannah through the mercy of Allah. There's no action you can do and say, I done this, I deserve paradise. Impossible. Allah. It don't work like that in the religion. Only people will go to paradise through the mercy of Allah. But what we try to do is do some good deeds that when we meet Allah, we've got a case. We've got something that Allah can say, okay, you know what? You done this, you done that, you done that. But you know what? You done this and done that. And I was pleased with that. I weren't pleased with that. I weren't pleased with that. I pleased with that. But I was pleased with that. And due to that, I'm going to forgive you for that. Give yourself something to meet Allah. But some of us, it's like, we're just link, li- living hunky-dory. You understand? We're like, we're not going to die. I'm okay. You understand? And when you put yourself in that situation, you get drowned, bro. So that's why we have to be, no matter what we're doing, whether we're running business or whatever, you have to have something. Ugh. You have to have something that, you know, when you meet Allah, you're meeting him with something. Imagine meeting Allah with nothing. Ugh. Nothing. Mm. That's mad. <laughs> it's true. That's, I, it's mental, bro. For, for a believer, you meet Allah with nothing. and got no good deeds. Come on, bro. So how, how do you keep a balance between your, your deen and your dunya in the sense that you're obviously you're active with Gambia? Yeah. But you also, you have to, you have a, your dunya and your responsibilities, you have mm. to work, etc. How do you, how do you find that balance? Bro, at the end of the day, you need to work to survive. So that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a no brainer. So obviously I work. It's almost like survive. the amount of time you put into, into Gambia is, is, is remarkable that you've still got a job. Yeah. It's true, it's true, it's true, <laughs> it's true. It's true. But you know what, you know what, you know what, you know what, to be honest with you, I put, not everything, but I put, I'd put my job on the line for that yeah. because at the end of the day, I know, I know, and I believe this with Yakin, if I'm doing this, Allah will make a route for me. Yeah. Because first and foremost, remember Allah SWT says, 50,000 years before he created the heaven and the earth, he's written down our risk. So whatever we're, we're meant to get, I'm going to get it. Mm-hmm. Whether I'm here, mm-hmm. whether I'm in Japan, whether mm-hmm. I'm in Pakistan, whether, wherever I am, I'm going to get it. Now the problem is, the yakin, innit? Mm. The certainty, innit? Mm. Because we know for a fact, anyone knows, understands that Allah is going to provide, your risk is written. But you got to still have that, that yakin, that can I go to this country and make money? Can I go? Once you got that yakin, you can do anything. You understand? You're not scared. But when you ain't got that yakin, that's when you're battling. Oh man, I can't afford to lose this job. And da 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 da. That's why you see some people stuck and you see other people flourishing because they're not scared. They got mm. the yakin. I'll go anywhere on the earth. Allah will provide for me. You heard Sahaba who, you know, when they when they made Hijrah and one Sahaba offered offered the other Sahaba half of his wealth. He said, no, just show me where the marketplace is. Because he knew that yeah. this is my thing. Mm. Allah is going to provide. Mm. Let me do my part. Allah will do the rest. So that's what I'm trying to get to. I'm not saying I'm at that level. Yeah, yeah. I want to be at that level. Because mm. when I'm at that level, I'm good, bro. Wherever you put me, I'm just like, alhamdulillah. You understand? I'm going to get it. I'm going to get the money that I need to survive and whatnot. And I believe as well, in regards to dunya, is how you look at money. I come from a background, obviously, from before Islam, I had a lot of money. And I know money doesn't make you happy. So the way I look at money now is completely different to the way maybe another person who looks at money because I've had money, I've had jewelry, cars, all this crap. I've had it. Do you get what I mean? Mm. And it don't phase me. Now, the way I look at money is that I have a dream in it. I have a dream. I'm not going to say my dream on here, but I have a dream. So if I have a certain amount of money to fulfill my dream, that's enough for me because I don't want to be, I just, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm 30 years old. So I don't want to be in the situation when I'm like 40, 45, and still be working, trying to get money. 
because some people want to be millionaires and that. Well, lie, they don't interest me. Mm. They don't interest me. But I just want enough money so I can do certain things that I'm not going to talk about on here. <laughs> but because it's my dream, man, I don't need to tell people yeah, my yeah. dream, but I have a certain amount of money so I can do certain things. And then uh, with the hope that Allah makes it easy and I can dedicate the rest of my life just like worshiping Allah. Do you know what I mean? When inshallah. when inshallah when you had before you reverted and, and you had so much money did you yeah. find that um did it have any negative effect like were you were you were you did, did more money make more problems for you cuz i know it was a substantial amount yeah well yeah but no because it was like this you know when i was younger when i was on the street doing whatever i was doing um making money was a motivation isn't it it was a motivation so when you when i didn't have that much money yeah um I still had the passion in it to make more. But I I wasn't no millionaire, nowhere near that. But, you know, when you start seeing figures, 50 grand, 70 grand, 100 bags, you start seeing money, you're just like, when you, when you picture this stuff before, you think, I need to get to these targets and then things are going to be good. <laughs> yeah. But when you start getting to these targets, you're like, no, 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 I need to, I need oh, to get no, more, man. I need to get more. And it's just like, it, in my mind, it's just starting not making sense anymore because... I'm going, I'm going, for example, I'm going to a nightclub, buying three, four bottles of crystal. Some clubs are paying six, seven hundred pounds for a bottle. Do you understand? And then it's like just a, re a repetitive circle. Like I'm doing the same thing over and over again. And then when I used to think about it, it used to drive me mad. So I just smoke weed. Smoke weed. <laughs> when I used to think about it, it used to make me depressed because I think to myself, when I'm on the ends, all the young ends or whatever, everyone's rating, man. Everybody wants me to bring them in, whatever, because I'm around certain people, I'm doing certain things. But people didn't know I was suffering inside. Do you get Even what I mean? Even though you had the money. Aki, man was suffering, bro. Mm. Man was suffering. Proper suffering because money was not making me happy. Do you get what I'm trying to say to you? Honestly, well, I swear by Allah, it was not making me happy. Man's going on holiday, I and Napa, all this, everything, what everyone did. Going showroom, buy new whips. You understand? Going, let me buy rollies, 30 bags, all this madness. But, Inside, mash up. And when you then found the dean, was it like a boot? Like, oh, Bro, that's what I was missing. For me, Islam was like a breath of fresh air. For everyone, it was different because, alhamdulillah, when I became a Muslim, I didn't become a Muslim under no pressure. Right. I didn't become a Muslim because my life was upside down. I didn't become a Muslim because I was in beef or I was in jail or anything like that. When I learned about Islam and, you know, when people started talking about death because enough man around me was dying. Do you understand? A lot of people around me was dying. I never forget one particular one of my elders who got shot. And um when I went to his funeral, I never forget, you know, he's um I think his dad, he just bought a, this time, this when Audi TT first came out. The old ones when they first came out. So his dad came in in his Audi TT, you know, and then his brother was driving his um R1 motorbike and all of that. And then in his in his in his janaza in his funeral they had all his jewelry around his neck and all of that and i was just sitting there me there was enough man there the funeral was in Wait, you muslim so no i went muslim i went muslim and i was just thinking like all of this this guy you see this shoot man wanted to be like this shoot like not because he was bad because he had paper he was like when you see someone <laughs> you just like he's got everything you know like when you're young there's always someone that you see in your ends that you're like no, his life is good. Whether you don't know what's going mm. on behind the scenes, but mm. was apparent like he's the man. And I liked his swag. I liked the way he dressed in particular. I, I just liked everything about him. Do you know what I mean? So when I saw his funeral, I just saw him there. I was just like, this is it. What is, what's this all about? Mm. All the money, all the gal, all of that, all the ratings. He can't help you now. Do you know what I mean? So mentally, it, would, it disturbed me, but there was no avenue. I didn't, what could I do? I'm, I didn't know I, religion was not even something I thought about. It crossed my mind. Do you know what I mean? It's not something that I'd even, religion, what's religion, bruv? Like, lie them talks, you understand? So it's only when a couple of my friends became Muslim and even, bro, I used to do mad things. I remember I used to live in one hostel and I remember there was some brothers, they came, I know them, I knew them before they were Muslim and they were outside my house. They like, bro, can we, like they called me and this time I had a, I just bought a Mercedes Jeep, fresh Jeep, yeah? And it was parked outside and they were calling me Call you up my phone, and they were like, "Oh, we're outside. Can we pray?" I said, "I'm not here, bro. Come, come pray, my." Yard. That's how I used to. I was, I was not religious inclined at all. But the more people started, the more my friends started telling me about Islam, and they started talking about death. 
see everything else, I could be like, this, nah, this don't make any sense to me. But when people are like, telling me about death, I start thinking, you know, I can't argue with this point. And then it got to a stage that I had to listen. And when I saw the way Islam changed some people that I knew used to do some very wicked things, wicked individuals, how Islam changed their character, it kind of, you know, it made me look, look at Islam differently. It wasn't what people were saying, it was the actions, you know. Seeing my bridges change, that made me think, wow, what's going on here? And my friends were changing, they, they weren't broke in the video, they were money men, you understand? Guys, you were making money. And when they used to say things to me, I had to listen because when I say, bro, it's whatever they used to come say, bro, I know you're not happy, you know. I'm like, whatever, fam. What? It's the truth. Do you understand? It's the truth. I knew that. And I used to get depressed so bad that I just got raving all the time. Mondays, I'm in 10 rooms, Western. Wednesday, I'm, I'm in 10 rooms again because one day, Wednesday. Then after 10 rooms, I'm going sold.uk. Flipping Thursday, I'm in, um, oh, I can't remember this other club in Western. I can't remember. Friday, I'm in Ministry of Sound. Saturday, I'm in um, um, Cirque. Sunday, I'm in um, Sound. Bro, repetitive. I'm telling you, anyone who knows me will tell you, I'm always in a club. <laughs> always, because if I go, if I'm in my yard, smoking, thinking, 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 thinking. Drive you mad. Drive you mad. So you got to go out, get drunk, smoke weed, gal, all of that, just to take my mind off things. Because if I'm on my, on my ones, peak bruv so you know it's like islam for me everyone's different in it islam was a breath of fresh air and well like i can say this openly yeah no one can say that i became muslim under any type of pressure anyone who knows me know that when i became muslim i had money i was known like i'm not saying i was a bad man or anything like that but anyone who knows me know that yeah that you, you had money it was flossing that's that's a known fact that's that's not hearsay that's a known fact you know and that's why alhamdulillah you see i've been doing Rose had to Islam for over five years. No one's ever come out and said, them man are not from the world. Them man are this, they're that. What they're saying is all fake. Ne you've never heard that. You've, it's, it's non-existent because people know it's the truth. And the good thing about it, I thank Allah, you know, because that I became Muslim under no pressure. Because the best form of dawah as well, because people know I changed. I didn't, I wasn't forced. I wasn't going through nothing in my life. Like, I mean, what was apparent? Obviously I was sad because Money weren't making me happy, but I'm saying what was apparent. I wasn't under no peer pressure on the street that made me turn to religion. Because you know people like to use that one. Oh, he was under pressure. He was this or that. None of that. And I thank Allah for that because I think that's made my, the dawah that I do more powerful, especially amongst non-Muslims, especially from people from my community. Because when they see, they say, you know what, bro, you were doing this thing and you left it all up for this religion. And they know that's the truth. So, alhamdulillah, you know, Islam for me, like I said, breath of fresh air, bruv. I couldn't, I couldn't ask for anything better. You know, yeah. to be honest with you, alhamdulillah. I so wish that we could like go into it so much more in it, but it's so sad, man. Because there's like we haven't even touched the surface about like just the, the the conversations that we could have and stuff we could have spoken about. But I know that this would have benefited like so many people and just like seeing stuff from a different perspective and from the perspective of like a different. Um, just from you, like, hearing stuff from your perspective, like, does open up. Like, even, I, you'd agree with me, Sam, like, it just opens your eyes up. Like, this whole time we've just been sat here listening. For sure. Because it opens your eyes up to, like, a different perspective yeah, of yeah. it as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. Interesting. I don't think he's going to give any more information than that. Nah. He's just giving it all. Just, <laughs> I'm, I'm surprised he came out of that as much. It's good. Very like, interesting. We didn't even, like, go into that charity stuff. And that kind of, but for sure, like, if you want to, um, uh, as much as... Um, he's against social media. <laughs> I'm not I'm against, against, I'm joking, no, I'm don't joking. say that. No, I'm you know joking. why you don't say that? Because you it, it might it might print in someone's brain. Uh, I don't uh, want listen, no one to think that. I'm not wanna, against anyone on social if media. If you want to see, if you want to like see more of our stuff, and I, I would highly recommend Roadside to Islam on YouTube. But uh, the username on Instagram is Roadside to Islam, and the, the the project in Gambia right now, although it's not just Gambia, will be expanding inshallah to other uh, places. But right now, the handle Instagram handle for the project is spot underscore project. Um, and look out, inshallah, next week I'm going to announce the dates and the timings and everything for the event that we're going to do in Ramadan. Um, and yeah, man, there's a lot going on with Spot, so we're really excited. Jazakallah uh, khair for listening. Is there anything, have I lifted anything out, Sam? That's it. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs>